amidst the global health crisis that has virtually disrupted life, at least life as we know it, what is the state of the Namibian nation? Article 32 of the Namibian Constitution provides that the President shall each year address Parliament while it's considering the appropriation bill and report on the activities of the previous year as well as outlines policies program for the next year. I'm Yaruki Kurondroka. I'll be keeping you company as we await the State of the Nation Address by President Hake Ingob. His sixth State of the Nation Address, but the first one for the new term. Now, to help me discuss this, I'm joined here by Fanuel Kapama, who is with the University of Namibia, as well as Lamek Odada from the Namibia University of Science and Technology. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're talking about the State of the Nation Address that is going to be ad delivered by the President this afternoon. Give us the context against which he is delivering the State of the Nation Address. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's coming at a very critical time. There are quite a lot of developments uh, on the home front as well as abroad. A lot of development on a number of different sectors. Normally, at this time, you would think that uh, the key point would be the budget. But uh, parallel to the discussion of the budget, or even if you look at uh, the theme which the Minister of Finance used when he presented the budget, he brought in the COVID-19 element. So what it basically speaks to is that uh, you have quite a lot of issues to factor in. Uh, uh, developments on the home front, developments uh, internationally, and quite a lot of sectors, uh, health, uh, uh, political, economic, agriculture, education, all these sectors are demanding attention. Mm -hmm. Some of it is uh, uh, oncoming attention given, say for instance, the challenges of the past but also the times that we are in has a lot of challenges and they are calling for a lot of attention and i think one of the key issues also that one have to factor in is that last year namibians went to the polls uh, the president was re-elected albeit by a reduced margin for the first time in around about uh, 25 years uh, mm -hmm. uh, the ruling party swapo is in parliament without a two-third majority. So there, there are quite a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, uh, that are coming at this time. Uh, right. That's why the state of the nation address this year uh, would be both exceptional and uh, interesting. Mr. Odada, as an overview, this one is coming probably for the first time in June. It's a winter state of the nation address. Are we expecting it to be called? Uh, thank you. Uh, I really don't expect it to be called. Uh, we know the status of the economy. We know the impact of the COVID. What really needs to come out very strongly in today's State of the Nation address is where are we heading to? From where we are, are we moving in any opposite direction or are we moving in the right direction? The President again will come out and tell us what are the plans that are in place. The President was re-elected definitely he will again come and assure the people of Namibia that in tr the trust that we have in him, he is still leading us in the right way. So I do not expect it to be a cold one, but I really expect and just going forward in general. Mm. We uh, Mr. Kapabo, we just had the budget address about a week ago. Uh, detailing what the state funds are going to be used for for the next 12 months or so. What is likely to be different this afternoon? Uh, yes, uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, it's coming during June. June is normally at the height of winter. But when you look at the social, the economic, and political conditions, both at home and abroad, uh, it would be a, a very warm uh, address. Many Namibians are sitting on their toes, wanting to see how the president would uh, address and respond to quite a number of issues that are 
closely affecting uh, their livelihood. Uh, there are quite a number of uh, very serious challenges. Uh, we are expecting an economic contraction given the challenges uh, presented by uh, COVID-19, the lockout, as well as the state of emergency measures. This year, during this time around June, children are back in school. But uh, given the challenges of the time, we are saying a phase three, 10 grade 11s and 12s are back. Some schools that were not uh, anticipating, say for instance, major capital developments, uh, like in terms of water, toilet facilities and so on, given the challenges of the time, uh, you are seeing a lot of activities. Uh, if you go to the casualty hall at the Winduk Central Hospital, it has been lying at uh, for some time. Yesterday it was converted into something new. And for the first time, Namibians received uh, for free 750 Namibian dollars. And uh, a number of them, the money has come, it has gone. Perhaps for a few days it provided reliefs, or a few weeks. A number of them are asking questions, will it return again? Because the challenges has not gone away, the conditions has not improved. So all those issues that I have alluded to requires expenditure. Mm -hmm. And government money is not always to be found somewhere uh, to, to be picked up. It requires some sort of magic of how to collect it, how to dispense it. And uh, that magic is required more in this year compared to any time in the past. But we're not going to print money. We're just going to have to find it somewhere and reallocate it yeah, somewhere. No, printing money also has its own implications. <laughs> uh, runaway <laughs> inflation. All right. So it's uh, <laughs> hard to manage it in the most sustainable way, I think. Uh, Mr. Arreda, before we expand and speculate more on what we are about to expect, let's reflect on the past five years. At the start of his term, President, uh, President Gingop spoke about uh, terms such as the inclusive, united um, Namibian house, nobody should feel left out. When you look at those terms and when you look at the term having ended, would you say uh, these terms were really um, achieved? Um, it, it, it all depends on how we look at it, but uh, what I would say is that in most of the areas that were really uh, brought out and were singled by the president, for example, the line of poverty, we can see that Namibia has done very well in trying to reduce poverty and inequality, even though Namibia is still one of the most in unequal countries in the world. But I think he has done so well even though he has not met the 100% mark, we don't expect him to have achieved everything. But so far, so good. And we hope again that today that reassurance will be there that for the last term, he is still going to lead us in the right direction. So I would say, so far, so good. He's done fairly well. But where have we done well, uh, Mr. Governor? Let, let's reflect on the Harambe Prosperity Plan and its five pillars. Which of those pillars would you take out as uh, having seen much achievement and those that are lacking behind? Yes. Now, I think uh, there were five pillars. Uh, uh, there were quite a lot of expectations and projections with regard to economic development. Uh, in terms of economic growth, employment creation, and uh, many other there were also expectations uh, with regard to infrastructural uh, development, uh, social progression, uh, addressing poverty, education, and so on, and then, of course, on the international uh, cooperation. So, but I think uh, uh, one would not just have to discuss uh, uh, progress or challenge or the lack thereof uh, in isolation. Uh, I think for the last five years, uh, Namibia has seen a major financial liquidity constraints whereby the resources that were at available for government to implement programs 
uh, experience uh, major constraints. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think many of those projects that have not taken off uh, were done with that in mind. And I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, having spoken about liquidity, one of the key challenges which the previous Minister of uh, Finance had to deal with was uh, uh, how do you manage public debt and as a result uh, uh, many government uh, expend, uh, projects uh, had to either be implemented on a very slower scale requiring that it would be completed over a long term, some had to be shelved completely and, and all these things have uh, implications. So I think uh, uh, the economic environment over the last five years, mm -hmm. in, in my view, was not one of the friendly uh, to speak to, and it had a lot of impact. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, with COVID, uh, uh, one would also see these challenges magnifying. Mr. Odada, effective governance and service delivery was one of those pillars. How has the government performed on this one? In your assessment? Um, in my assessment, I remember the introduction of, uh, how do we call it, the performance agreement, mm -hmm. which we can really not assess it now, but I think that was one of the issues that was forcing people to be accountable. We've had several times when the Honorable President tells people that you will have to be accountable for your actions. He's not gone behind to hide if anything happens. I still think it is an area that can still be improved on, but we should be able to measure this based on these performance agreements. Are we able to see the statistics? Where are they working? What have they done so far? So it is an area that could still be improved on, but for the start. It's, but even it's a if good one thing. has regard to the assessment, uh, the performance agreements that you spoke to, was there really any assessment done after each year, and what were the take actions taken in the event that one was found not to have performed as per expectations? Have we seen anything being taken? Uh, it, it, it's difficult because the, the question may be assuming that if something goes wrong, then we expect the president to take the action. But we've got bodies and agencies that, for example, the Anti-Corruption Commission that have been mandated to do some of these things. So the president's hand is also somehow tied in that if something goes wrong and somebody needs to be accountable, the same person also has a right that needs to be given a fair trial. Mm -hmm. But it, it all depends on these other bodies. What are they doing? Are they really carrying out their duties effectively? And so I would not say he's not done much, but I've what from, from my own assessment, he's led the bodies to take their own mandates without interfering in what they do. Mr. Kapama, have we seen the full implementation and full assessment of those performance agreements? Uh, yes. No, uh, there has not been a, a process of going back to the public in terms of uh, uh, scoring or even putting uh, whether any evaluation and the scoring of the performance of the different. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, from uh, as a political scientist, one of the indicators that uh, one looks at is uh, uh, at the beginning of this year with the president going into the second term, quite a number of uh, ministers did not return a number of ministers were moved across portfolios. Uh, would you attribute uh, uh, those that did not return as something that had to do with their performance? A number of them did not return because uh, they didn't make it through the electoral college and they were placed much lower on the list. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, uh, from a political science point of view, uh, when you talk of performance contract uh, and you announce them in the public, it sounds like music uh, to the ear. But uh, those of us that are in political science, uh, we also have questions. Uh, uh, is it really an instrument that one can say 
is at the end of the day creative, do people get rewarded on the basis of performance or there are some other political consideration and in many instances it's both. So when you are a politician, there's not a question of how you spend the hundred dollar that you are given to spend as a minister, but also how you broadly manage the bigger political portfolio. So uh, I have not seen a copy of the performance agreement. I'm not sure how much is it uh, scored uh, between the actual performance mm -hmm. and between those issues that are attributed to the, the political contestations uh, uh, within the party, within government, and, and so on, and also between individuals. M Mr. Odada, economic advancement was another pillar. Have we seen progress there? Um, if, if we look at economic advance, advancement, just from what Ma, Mr. Kapama said, that Namibia finds itself in a situation whereby the whole world is, the, the, the economy of the whole world is contracting. And therefore, we do not expect Namibia to be the isolated country that would be grow, having a positive growth if everybody else is having a negative growth. Um, we've looked at that in terms of employment. Unemployment rate is still high. And these are the things that we would talk about in terms of economic advancement. So I would, I would then say that that's an area that has not gone very well. And it could be an area that needs some serious retrospection going forward. Many of the Namibian people are in the streets. They don't have jobs. Now, add that to the COVID situation. We've seen companies retrenching, companies forcing people to get pay cuts. So it's an area that we really need to think of. And again, this is a collective project, not only for the president or for the SWAPO uh, government, but each and every Namibian should also find a way of bringing their part so that we pull together in the same direction. Your overview on social progression? Social progression, if I look at the, the, the basic grants, it has done well. We've seen the food bank has been trying. But in general, what I look at is how many people have been lifted out of poverty. I would then say not many. So I would score that on a 50-50 basis of saying we've done fairly well, but there's still more that can be done. Mr. Governor, overall, as an overview, when he is looking at um, the plan that he put before uh, Parliament in 2016, what would he say we have done well under this plan? This plan has really helped us accelerate certain of those targets that we had. What is he likely to say? Uh, yes, uh, there are quite a number of uh, uh, issues under the pillars uh, where you can say one have done at least a little bit. But also what one need to recognize is that uh, uh, these aspects also influence one another. Like say for instance, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the food bank initiative, uh, by its structure, it can be seen as uh, something that was designed for poverty alleviation, something in the short term to ensure that uh, the households that have nothing to eat at least survive uh, continuously. But it cannot be seen as a poverty reduction or a poverty uh, alleviation uh, eradication strategy because it does not take people out of poverty, but at least it sustains them. Uh, if you go out and you speak to those that were beneficiaries, especially at the height of the drought, there is a, a sense of appreciation for uh, what it was able to offer. Of so course, uh, there were a lot of debates. Would it be sustainable? Uh, what if it is a medium term? What is the, the short term? What is the medium and the long term strategy? Uh, in, in the long run, but also some of those activities, like say for instance, uh, if the food that was distributed in the food bank was, uh, distrib was produced locally, then it provided a market to the, uh, the, 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 the farmers that were involved in the production, those who were uh, involved in the uh, addition of value to whatever agricultural 
commodities that were in the end uh, redistributed. So all these things affect one another. And uh, if you spend more on those ones, then at the end of the day, it's going to have an impact on uh, public debt at the end. So th there are so many issues that uh, uh, closely interact with one another. The performance of one could produce a cost for, for another. So in the end, he's likely to say the implementation was successful and this plan has really helped us, or not? Uh, I would expect that he would say that uh, in some areas we have done well, and uh, he would be able to enumerate them, and in others he would be able to point out uh, some of the challenges uh, that were experienced. Mm -hmm. And uh, given the current uh, challenges also, what would be very critical is that uh, uh, the, the, the message going forward, uh, given the current uh, context, one may not expect uh, a, a broader array of issues, but uh, there may be a prioritization of certain government programs that would be seen to be critical. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for this year and uh, perhaps next year we would uh, see more of uh, what the plan would be in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, please take note that the sound that you're hearing is from the House, really indicating to the members that it's about time that they gather into our House. As we expect the arrival of the President for his State of the Nation address this afternoon. Now, Mr. Odada, he's looking at a new term. He's only about three months in, about three months into the new term. Is he likely to present another plan taking us forward? Mm, uh, I wouldn't expect that another plan be put in place, but I would rather we go back to the previous plan, see where we fell short, and take those going forward. But um, the only plan that could be brought now is getting us out of the COVID situation. That is very crucial. But in general, I would, I would expect that we are going to do the assessment on the previous plans and continue with what has not been achieved. L let's talk about the, as we await the, the, the president entering the, the, the National Assembly, L let's talk about this COVID challenge that it poses to Namibians and the Namibian economy. Have we thus far seen a long-term plan, or is it just a plan to get us over and then we find a way as to how we could sustain ourselves going forward? Have we seen any long-term plans surviving and sustaining COVID challenges? Uh, yes, no, I think uh, the COVID issue is, uh, it came as a, an emergency. Uh, how long we are going to live with it is, is one of the key questions. Uh, and I think uh, that has been the challenge to many governments the world over. And uh, therefore, the approach of quite a number of governments has been short term. Uh, maybe three, four months from now, we would see how governments would uh, start putting into place uh, uh, how they would now handle it uh, in, into, into the long term. Because like uh, there are quite a number of issues. Uh, uh, the shift to online, for instance. Mm. Uh, and many people are talking of uh, returning life, returning to normal. Mm. Perhaps they may not be the current normal. May, may, may become the normal. Okay. Uh, where we would be wearing uh, uh, mask all mask over the place. Mask all over, where washing of hands becomes the norm. And the handshakes are all gone. And the handshakes are all gone. Where all right. M Mr. Kapama, Mr. Odada, we I'm informed that the president is, uh, has arrived and is about to enter the chamber. So we will be crossing over there uh, and see how proceedings unfold there, leading him to him delivering the State of the Nation address this afternoon.
went up to Messi or law, get him shall they also honor thy name in all we think, do, and say. Almighty God, we through thee bless our land and all its people. This all we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's affirm. I solemnly affirm that I will be faithful to the Republic of Namibia and its people, and I solemnly promise to uphold and defend the Constitution and the law of the Republic of Namibia to the best of my ability. Please be seated. His Excellency, the President, Dr. Hagel Higo, is going to address Parliament on the state of the nation. Honorable members, allow me to go and invite the President, accompanied by the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Deputy Vice Chairperson of the National Council in the chamber. In the meantime, please remain standing until the president's procession has entered the chamber. I thank you. seated. Just 
a brief moment for members of the media. Once you are done, please give us the chance to, pros to proceed. Thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. Hage Gottfried Gainkop, President of the Republic of Namibia, Madam Gainkop, First Lady of the Republic of Namibia, Your Excellency, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, the Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, Right Honorable Dr. Sara Kukongela Amadila, Prime Minister of our Republic, the Honorable Vicky Kaumba, Vice Chairperson of the National Council, His Lordship Pietris Damasep, Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Namibia, the Honorable McHenry Venani, Leader of the Official Opposition in Parliament, the Honourable Members of Parliament, Service Chiefs here present, I suppose we normally refer to High Commissioners and Ambassadors, accredited to the Republic of Namibia, distinguished invited guests, members of the media, Ladies and gentlemen, on my own behalf and that of the Honorable Vicky Kaoma, Vice Chairperson of the National Council, I extend a warm welcome to all of you here this afternoon at this joint sitting of Parliament. Firstly, let me apologize that unlike all previous times, we are not able to all sit under one roof, but rather at various venues for this important event. And I don't need to explain, this is due to circumstances beyond our control relating to COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas it may seem like an inconvenience it is for our own safety that we practice social distancing alongside all other health safety measures at this point in time. In this regard, I wish to appreciate our long time reliable development partners, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung, office in Namibia for kindly facilitating us to procure services that have enabled us to host this virtual parliament. Challenging times will always call for innovative means to remain dynamic. Comrade President, honorable members, distinguished invited guests. This past year has been a particular challenging year to our nation. We suffered an almost seven year prolonged drought that saw our landscape littered with skeletons of dying livestock and game. And just as the rain had started, to transform the landscape with a much awaited greenery, thereby putting a smile on our faces. And I'm saying this since we have many honorable members here who are also farmers. As we are beginning to show some smiling faces, it ended, we ended the coronavirus. COVID-19 global pandemic. All this has been playing on an economy already 
suffering from the protracted global financial meltdown. When a nation is faced with such daunting challenges, it calls for national unity and solidarity so that we can collectively overcome. I'm therefore one to particularly thank everybody in our country for patiently tackling these multifaceted challenges with a humane sense of understanding, a fact that has been acknowledged by many partner institutions and governments in Africa and beyond. Your Excellency, Honorable Members, Article 32.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia requires that the President and Cabinet shall each year during the, their consideration of the official budget attend Parliament to present the State of the Nation Address, SONA. The fundamental purpose of SONA is for the President to account to the nation about the performance of the government in line with its policies and plans for national development. If you permit me, I'll get there. I think you jump slightly early. Um, um, so during such session, the president shall address parliament on the state of the nation and future policies of the government, report on policies of the previous year and be available to respond to questions that may be put to him. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the positive cooperation shown by the whips of all parties represented in Parliament as we have discussed ways to manage the budget under the constraints of COVID-19. We hope this spirit will continue as we deal with the final stages of the national budget. Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to Parliament and in particular to the National Assembly Chamber of the Republic of Namibia. Honorable members of Parliament, it is my distinguished honor and privilege to invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia, What is the point here? There was a question posed and the, the, the questions will come after the delivery of statement. The question, uh, this, is, this is not the first time. No, 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 no. No, we, there will be a statement that the president will deliver. Yes. Can you, can you get your mic? Honorable Speaker, mm. it is a parliamentary convention. Mm -hmm. pa our parliamentary rule, Rule 15 D, E, and F, mm -hmm. states that at every beginning of the year, the head of state shall open the session, the legislative calendar. Yes. That has not happened. Yes, now, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with it. But I'm you have invited the president No, 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 no. <laughs> I, the, the, because that would be dealt with along when he, the president speaks because we, were, we didn't have, 
we, there was no there was no other opportunity. The president have come here for the first time. Yes, indeed. He will be able to combine that. No, 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 we, no, no, no. We, there is no way. I, are you now asking the the, pre, the president to is to formally, formally, formally? No, no, no. The, yeah. So, okay. So the, can we as part of this exercise, the parliament is officially open? Yeah, because the, we, we, we never had an opportunity to do so because the press, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, the, pre, the, the no, no, no. Oh, open. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let's let's not. Let's let's not. Yeah. No, no. No, normally. Yeah. Okay. You are saying. You are saying. Yeah. Are you say? Are you saying? No, 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 no. Let's not have a dialogue. No, can, can I just hear Honorable Ben Nandi correctly? Okay, so can I call the, the president to officially open parliament before? So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, what is the point? Yeah, no, we, we cannot, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I, I, let me hear you. Honorable Speaker, mm. the invitation that you send out to the country, to the media, to everyone, yeah. is that the president would, today after budget, would come and address under Article 35 a joint sitting of the state of the nation. Yes. But conventionally, and according to our rules, the president, the, our rule says the House shall meet and after a period of time the president will open the parliamentary calendar year. But the calendar year was not open. Yeah. Yes. Now we are asking you, why did you allow the leader of the opposition to open the calendar year while the president is supposed to do that? Well, <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. Let's, let's, you made your point. <laughs> you made your point. You made your point. Now may I proceed? I'm sure. Yes, thank you very much. Um, where are we? Let me. <laughs> okay. Honorable member. Yes, honorable member. Let, please order. Order. Order, please. Order. Honorable member, it is now my distinct honor and pleasure to invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Hage Grofit Kainko, to address the Parliament and the people of Namibia on the state of the nation. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Yes, you see that. Mm. I have a problem. Can I get this? Since I have distance. No, I cannot tell. You, you, you can it's common sense, it. I have distance. Common there, sense, there is, I have a distance. There is, sufficient, there, is, there is a sufficient distance from everyone. Common sense. If, if, that, if you can remove it a bit, you can do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Honorable Professor Peter Kachabibi, Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Victoria Kauma, Vice Chairperson of the National Council, Right Honorable Sarah Kuangula Amadila, 
Prime Minister and the leader of the government business in the parliament, Comrade Sophia Shaningwa, Secretary General of the ruling party, Honorable McHenry Benani, leader of the official. <laughs> so from now on, from now on, he is a leader. He will be the only one to speak on behalf of opposition. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable okay, members, okay. Honorable members of Parliament, special guest, yeah. Comrade Nambolo, Nambolo Bumba, Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, Your Lordship, Deputy Chief Justice, Petrus Damasep, Madam Monica Kengos, the First Lady of the Republic of Namibia, members of the media, fellow Namibians. During my inauguration on March 21, I took an oath before God and before you to strive to the best of my ability to uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution and to obey, execute, and administer the laws of the Republic of Namibia. I took an oath to protect the independence, territorial integrity, and the material and spiritual resources of the Republic of Namibia. I swore that I would endeavor to the best of my ability to work towards justice for all the inhabitants of Namibia. Therefore, I stand before you today in fulfillment of my constitutional mandate to deliver the first State of the Nation address of my second and the last term as President of the Republic of Namibia. I would like to thank the members of six parliament of Namibia under the leadership of the speaker and the deputy speaker for their invaluable contributions to our democracy and nation building. I congratulate the re-elected speaker, his deputy, the leader of the official opposition, and all leaders especially the newcomers to this seventh parliament and outcome as the outcome of our peaceful and democratic presidential and national assembly elections of November 2019. I didn't see anybody killed. Honorable Speaker, members of parliament, while the past five years have been challenging as a result of the global economic downturn and protracted drought, the past four months have been particularly daunting. All of humanity has been affected by COVID-19, and there is no doubt that survival will require a collective effort. Our lives have been disrupted and our financial security placed in jeopardy with uncertainty and anxiety looming large. Fellow Namibians, I share in your anxieties. I understand your distress as breadwinners of our households. Many of you may have lost or have already lost your income. I sympathize with you. I understand the pain of our small and large business owners and entrepreneurs whose businesses have closed down, face the risk of closure due to economic pressure, the others. I share the concerns of our learners, students, and youth whose academic year has been upended by this crisis. I also understand the frustration of graduates 
who face fewer economic opportunities under the prevailing circumstances. I share the plight of the poor and the vulnerable who face sleepless nights because of homelessness and hunger. This is, this is the defining hour of this generation. This is a challenge of our time, one we must overcome as a united people. Namibians will endure if we stand firm in unity of purpose, if we take collective action to build a better society, if we all ascribe to the admirable principles of humanity that galvanize our struggle of independence. Only then will we rise above the limitations of this crisis to take this nation forward, forward to prosperous and economic future. Honorable Speaker, members of Parliament, despite the highly contested and spirited campaigns that preceded the November 29 election, 2019 elections, we are all gathered here, united in our collective responsibility to safeguard the well-being of all Namibians. Faced with the realities of today, a significant task awaits you. As in every healthy democracy, I expect lively discourse as we deliberate on how best to steer our country towards a future of shared prosperity. However, let us bear in mind that there is no enemies in this house. The enemies we face are those that pose a danger to all Namibians, namely unemployment, low economic growth, infectious diseases, inadequate shelter, corruption, crime, gender-based violence, and other scourges that threaten the socio-economic fabric of our society. The sovereigns elected us to defend our hard-won liberty, to maintain national unity, and deliver justice in the name in Namibian House. In this regard, we must collectively commit to the fulfilling this obligation through regular attendance of sessions, robust parliamentary debate, and active committee sessions. Let us maintain decorum. Let us maintain decorum and uphold a high standard of conduct in this beacon of our democracy. I am here to, today to fulfill my constitutional duty, attending Parliament to deliver this accountability report to the people of Namibia and respond to questions in relation to that. In accordance with the special hybrid nature of our Parliament, the head of state is not a member of the Parliament but is directly elected by the single constituency, the electorate. The right honorable prime minister, as a leader of government business in parliament, assisted by all the ministers, is constitutionally mandated to participate in parliamentary debates and provide responses as required. Honorable speaker, fellow Namibians, we have come to the end of the first term of this government. And I will present a progress report highlighting key accomplishments and challenges encountered over the term. The details are presented in a Harambe Prosperity Plan final report that has been distributed. I will also outline the plan of government for the second term. Upon inauguration on March 21st, 2019, I declared all-out war against poverty, income and wealth inequalities, and corruption in the quest to achieve more inclusive growth and shared prosperity. The noble goal of eradicating poverty was perceived by some 
could be too ambiguous. However, we must dream big and be bold in the pursuit of our lofty ideals. Considering the significant inroads made in poverty reduction since independence, I remain confident that we have sufficient resources and concerted efforts, Namibia can one day achieve the goal of a more equal society. The burning desire, when? The burning desire to overcome <laughs> the limitations that confine our people to poverty, inequality, and undignified life compelled us to formulate the Harambe Prosperity Plan as a tool to fast track development and draw us closer to the attainment of our national development plans and vision 2030. The four-year impact plan was formulated following a country-wide grassroots consultations, popularly known as town hall meetings. This bottom-up approach to planning informed our development priorities. Hello, Namibians. At the end of the first term, the Harambe Prosperity Plan recorded an average 70% overall execution rate on set goals and outcomes. This has been calculated, this has been calculated against the implementation outcomes of activities below, of, of, of bare pillar. Despite a number of independent intervening variables that adversely affected our ability to obtain the said target of 80% execution rate, we achieved this relatively high rate by focusing on key deliverables with lesser financial implications. Effective governance. The first pillar of the HPP requires the least financial resourcing and it is more heavily dependent on cultivation of an efficient and effective performance culture in the public service. I have made a good start. We have made a good start implementing our national anti-corruption strategy. All, listen, you will hear. All forms of corruption are destructive and regrettably continue to taint our country. All forms of corruption are destructive and regrettably continue to taint our country. Contrary to erroneous perceptions, we do not lack the political will to fight corruption. We have taken, we have taken action and we're going forward, continue to take decisive action to tackle this scourge. You may recall that long before the so-called fish rod, fish, fish rod, expose, you may recall that long before the so-called fish rod expose, during the February 2018, I requested, it's okay. It's okay. I requested several cabinet ministers to respond to allegations no, 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 no. Let, of let's, corruption let's have, let's have order, please. leveled order, against order, them. Order. Their responses were subsequently forwarded to the Anti-Corruption Commission for investigation, consisting with my conviction to threaten, strengthen processes, systems, and institutions. Today, two senior former ministers are in jail for seven months with no interference from the executive. Order, this order, please, order. My firm belief order. in the principle of separation of powers and allowing the law to take its course. I often state that truth doesn't change. Concrete actions have been taken over the term to confront cases of perceived and alleged corruption. These include the decision to cancel award, awarding of the Hosea Kutako International Airport upgrading tender, which was 
which was inflated from some can listen. From no, no, inflated please, please, because of corruption. Order. Inflated from three billion to seven billion. We stopped it and we lost the first round in the court. We went ahead. We are determined to address corruption. We went ahead to the High Court. And there the court ruled. And therefore, listen, we saved four billion. That would have gone to corruption. Four billion. That's action. That's action. No, no, no. We launched investigation. Order, order. No, 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 no. We need order. We, we, we cannot continue. No, no, no. We cannot continue with it. We, Why we don't you wait and ask questions? Down. There is a question time. We need order. Please sit down, please. Sit down. Please, sit down, please. Sit we down, please. We launch. Why don't you listen, please? Please. What is that? No, we need order. If you don't want to listen, then I think you should allow those who like to listen yeah. to listen. Respect. For, no, no, no. Honestly, we cannot continue with the. We cannot continue with the disruption. No, no, no. No, no, no. We, we cannot. We cannot. No, no. We. I'm, no, I'm saying we cannot continue with people jumping up and down. That is totally out I, of order. I don't, I don't come for insults. Yeah. I'm not going to continue. I cannot no, no. continue. No, no. Co yes. Please, please continue. Please continue. No. I'm, I'm here to be insulted. I'm please. Here. This, I come to address the parliament. This is, we no, cannot, cannot, we cannot allow. No. No, 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 no. No. Okay, okay. O okay. Honourable members, order, 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 order. We need order, 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 order. Honourable, honourable members, those of you who like, who feel we cannot continue to listen, please leave the hall. Leave the, the chamber. Yes, yes, yes. I think that is the best. No, no, honestly. No, no, I think that is the best we can do. If you cannot, if you cannot continue to listen, you are continuously interrupting, then I think you should leave the, the no, 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 no. I think, no, 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 no. Can, can we? No, 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 but we don't want further, we don't want further, I, the president can only continue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. There are those members of parliament who are willing to listen to the president without, without interruption. But if those of you who cannot contain yourself, then I will ask you respectfully to leave the chamber. Yes. I think, I think that is the... That is, no, no. No, no. Because that is... Be, be, because you cannot expect, no, no, you cannot, no, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, I'm now going to, I'm now going to, I'm, I'm going to rule, I'm going to rule on this, no, no, yes. No, wait for the light. We are a democratic state where the government has the right to say it's safe. That's why we afforded the president and the government the courtesy to sit in chambers to hear what the government has to say. Similarly, similarly, government has a duty to hear the cries of opposition of things that are going wrong. Everything in this nation is not correct. And when the president is talking about corruption and things that are going wrong in the country, and he is airing a view of government of how they are dealing with it. It's fully within the opposition's right to protest if those view, if those measures in our okay. view are not honorable, sufficient. Yes, honorable, so for that, yes, you okay. kick us out. Okay. Yes. Honorable Muharukwa. Honorable Muharukwa. This is, this is precisely, honorable member, this is precisely what the president was doing give his state of the nation address, you respond 
when the time comes by asking specific questions. But now, you are not permit, you are not allowing him to do so. Therefore, those of you who don't, don't want to listen, please leave the chamber. Please leave the, the chamber so that we can, yes, yes, yeah. Now, if you stay, if you are right to stay, then we cannot have interruptions. No, 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 I'm, no, 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 you don't have the floor, no, 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 let's, 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 let's have order, let's have order, no, let's have order, yeah, let's have order, the point I'm making is this, I don't want to entertain further disruptions, yeah, but, because, because, then, then jumping, no, 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 we cannot have, no, 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 the, the rules are clear, I, I, I'm, I'm using the same rules, I'm using the same rules, the rules are very clear, very, very clear, yeah, rule, rule, rule number 110, 118B, all these rules are basically, are saying, the president is a, the guest to present a constitutional report, and we should we should we should give him the courtesy and respect to hear him out. That's what we are going to do. Can we continue without any interruption? No, 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 no. You, no, 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 no. Okay, we, we, we can, no, no, please, honorable member, for God's sake, let's have some order. Uh, now, I don't want that. I want that to maintain order. Your Excellency, I'm very sorry. I would like you to continue. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Please, let's sit down. Uh, mm. No, you, you, you can do it. You can do it for the for, for, from your seat. Yeah. Please, please. We don't need that. I look younger than many young people. Yeah. Far, far. The decision, since I'm were out, to cancel awarding of the Hosea Kutago International Airport operating tender, which was inflated from corruption from three billion to seven billion and million dollars. We canceled. Whoever must be found please. by courts, please. by courts. Please, let's continue this was, this was challenged in the High Court. <clears throat> we have courts. We initially lost the case and appealed to the Supreme Court, which subsequently overturned the decision. By that, we saved this country $4 billion. We launched investigations into alleged irregularities in the contracts for the National Storage Facility, a negative time, which exposed government to currency fluctuations, and we had to pay half a billion dollars for that. The investigations resulted in a disciplinary hearing, resulting in some implicated officials being cleared, while others received appropriate sanctions due to administrative shortcomings, it was said. Government, through the Ministry of Finance, also launched lifestyle audits and investigations into tax evasion and money laundering. Charges brought against these individuals ended up in the courts, it's in the courts. Ongoing cases of alleged corruption are such as the SME Bank, Offshore Development Company, and the Developmental Capital Portfolio of DIBF and Cora Music Awards are all at the courts. We will only prevail in the war against corruption when transparency is nurtured within the governance institution governance systems. Each and every Namibian has a role to play in uprooting corruption. I caution that we should protect the dignity 
of fellow citizens by guarding against accusations of corruption in the absence of evidence. In the fight against corruption, the due process of law should prevail. A testament to our commitment to improving accountability and transparency, transparency Namibia increased in ranking on the Abraham Index, making us one of the top five best governed countries in Africa. Namibia is number four on the continent preceded by Mauritius, Seychelles, and Cabo Verde in top three positions, and followed by Botswana, Ghana, Rwanda, South, and South Africa, respectively. They are behind us. This progression can be attributed to the introduction of the public performance management system, legislative reforms to strengthen accountability and transparency, and aforementioned investigations launched in order to, to regularize irregular tenders and awarding of tenders irregularly and corruptly. The Whistleblower and Witness Protection Act will be operationalized during this term as additional measures to strengthen the fight against corruption. Similarly, the key reforms, including the voluntary declaration of assets by my wife and I, voluntarily, publicly, members of parliament and senior government officials, and the open door media policy of the presidency have strengthened transparency. The reporters without borders, World Press Freedom Index of 2020 ranked Namibia number one in Africa and number 23rd. <coughs> number 23rd in the world, outranking long established democracies in other parts of the world. Going forward, this government will continue to champion medium, media freedom. However, as we added, added, undertake much needed introspection as government, we also expect that the media reflect on its role in a society. We rely on the media as the fourth estate for truth and fairness. The role of the media in improving factual reporting is therefore of paramount importance. Honorable Speaker, the Namibian economy continues to experience unprecedented headwaves since 2016. Among the challenges included are declining economic growth and per capita income, low investments and high public expenditure ratio, compounded by the global economic downturn, declining commodity prices and exchange rate fluctuations. The five-year drought that ravaged our agricultural sector exposed thousands of Namibian households to food insecurity, necessitating the reallocation of funding to drought relief programs in line with our commitment that no Namibian should die due to hunger. To stabilize our public finances, a fiscal consolidation strategy and expenditure which was introduced in 2020-2015 to contain expenditure government affected the deepest cuts since independence. I would like to thank the former Minister of Finance, Comrade Kale Sleitman, for implementing these difficult reforms to stabilize the fiscal position. Green shoots of recovery were becoming visible. Unfortunately, this, prospects, this prospect has been severely compromised by the outbreak of COVID-19. Comrade Kale, I am confident that you will discharge your new, new mandate with the same vigor to ensure food and water supply security, which are both very critical. As promised, As promised in my 2019 SONA, I announced in March this year I reduced government structures.
from 25 ministries down to 19 ministries. We achieved this reduction of six ministries. By merging thank you, thank you, thank some you. of the existing ones to align government functions for efficient and effective service delivery. In line with the Swapo Party commitment to reaching gender parity at the highest levels of government leadership, 19 of 18, 18 of the 29 newly appointed ministers and deputy ministers are women. This represents, this represents 62 percent female representation in the executive. We recognize that our fight against inequality would not be complete without the empowerment of women. I am confident this House is working towards similar milestones. In light of ongoing government measures to reduce public expenditure, reforms were undertaken to eliminate wastage with respect to the conditions of service and benefits of public office bearers. As a result, there will be no new vehicle fleet of government for the term and no new off-road vehicles will be purchased for members of executive and public of This will translate into, by the way, you know, I'm older than your mother. Now I'm older, I'm older. Yeah. This will translate please, 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 into please, a savings please, please, of approximately please, 20, please, 200 please. million Namibian Let, dollars. Please, please, please. So you please must order, call me properly. Please, please address please me properly. Order. Address order, me properly. Please. Oh, okay, order. Please. Okay, you order, please. Me names here? Yeah. No, no, please. Let's have some order, please. Deal with it. Yeah, please. Furthermore, sit down. we have abolished the positions of special advisors to governors. At this juncture, I would like to thank the new Minister of Finance, Comrade Ipumbu Simumu, Shimi, for tabling under the circumstances, a reasonable budget. Given his detailed budget speech, I will not re repeat the financial aspects in this sauna. Honorable Speaker, Member of Parliament, Members of Parliament, on Tuesday this week, I held a telephonic conversation with the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau during which I raised, among other things, the difficult situation that so-called upper-middle-income countries like Namibia find themselves in. We have maintained that while the concept of upper-middle-income upper countries is valid, the application which takes a GDP, take a small population, dividing that one in, and get a high per capita income is not good. He listened to me. He, of course, said that also applies to many of his friends in Caribbean countries. This upper middle income classification continues to disadvantage Namibia's ability to access soft loans, while countries regarded as less developed are eligible to receive grant funding. I'm of the view that measures such as UNDP Human Development Index provides a more accurate assessment development per capita. Such a contextual criteria based reclassification will help developing countries like Namibia to effectively redress historical structural imbalances. We believe that poverty should not be managed but must be eradicated through effective tools such as economic empowerment and employment creation. According to the Namibian Statistics Agency, unemployment remains high at 33% in 2018, while youth unemployment increased to 46.1% during the same period. The status quo 
is not sustainable, and emphasis falls on stimulating job-creating economic growth. The NSA also reports that the Namibian economy created 48,557 jobs between 2016 and 2018. Regrettably, recurring drought spells and declining consumer spending negatively re reversed these gains. Investment promotion has been central to this government's economic development agenda. There was a tapering off in investment from 2016, following completion of major capital projects in the mining and construction sector, se sectors. To mitigate declining investment, government aggressively pursued regional and international investment roadshows. The 2016 International Investment Namibia Conference secured 34 investment projects of a total value, value of 2.6 billion Namibian dollars. The 2019 Economic Growth Summit convened under the auspices of the High Level Panel on Namibian Economy mobilized 14 billion Namibian dollars in investment and financial investment takes the oh my God. Mm, I'm telling you. Delays, delays in decision making continue to undermine our ability to concretize investment deals and secure development. I have on different occasions urged cabinet ministers to timely provide responses to prospective investors. We cannot continue to keep people waiting indefinitely. Whether Yes or no, we must provide responses. Investors have other places to go to. And if you don't have time for them, just sitting without saying yes or no, they will go somewhere else. So I have urged the cabinet already that ministers must answer, give answers by saying yes or no, so that people can know where they stand. I am mindful that we have increasing perceptions of corruption Ministers and officials may be apprehensive to take decisions. However, the new cabinet is enjoined to timely provide responses, and they are doing that already. SM, SME development recorded satisfactory improvement over the term. Following the closure of SME Bank, <coughs> government through the Development Bank of Namibia established SME centers in three regions to respond to SME funding needs. The Development Bank of Namibia approved a total of 425 million Namibian dollars for SME projects between 2017 and 2020, benefiting 318 SMEs. To address the hurdle of non collateralized lending, government introduced a skills based lending facility, the credit guarantee scheme, mentoring programs, and facilitated the establishment of 121 rural youth enterprises. All these programs were capitalized with an amount of 130 million Namibian dollars. Progress has been made through the industrial policy. Our economic transformation agenda remains urgent and can be realized through structural reforms that support inclusion of the previously disadvantaged majority and diversification of economic activities through industrialization and manufacturing. For these reasons, once the Namibia Equitable Economic Empowerment Bill is tabled, I implore <coughs> this honorable house to prioritize its enactment. Government received this week a report from the Economic Policy Research Association on the latest version of NEEB. A cursory review suggests that the authors are interested only in protecting people-centered reforms that result in tangible improvements in the lives of our people. We have made progress in poverty, and poverty has definitely declined. According to Namibia Statistics Agency, poverty declined in Namibia from a 70% in 
94 to 32% in 2003, and 18% by 2016. By now, it should be lower. But they don't have the statistics. According to the 2017 World Bank report, and as endorsed by Oxfam International, Namibia's decline in poverty is attributable to the targeted policy framework. <clears throat> Government allocates a high percentage of resources to the social sectors, including universal access to education, a highly subsidized healthcare system, and social safety nets that reverse the effects of skewed economy. Namibia, South Africa, and Botswana are among the few African countries that provide the old age social grant as a cash transfer, which directly contribute to arresting poverty and childhood standing. Government has increased this grant by more than 100% over the past four years. Other social safety nets implemented by government include the foster care grant for vulnerable and orphaned children, marginalized and disabled grant, that school feeding program, food for work and veterans grants. In total, government spent 3.9 billion Namibian dollars, nearly 4 billion Namibian dollars on social grants <coughs> per annum benefiting 1, billion, 1 million people, or 41% of the total population. Over the period 2015 to 2019, government redirected resources to the value of $1.2 billion towards the drought relief program, which has benefited annually an average of 564,000 983 people across all 14 regions. During the same period, government introduced a food bank to reduce hunger among the extreme poor citizens in urban and very urban areas. The food bank has been rolled out to all 14 regions and covers 10,156 households of 42,081 individual beneficiaries in 20. To end in end 219 street committees. Due to ongoing refinements to the eligibility criteria of beneficiaries, the figure has, reduced, has decreased, and the program is now serving truly needed, truly needed members of our society. Despite the inroads we have made, there are still there are limits to what fiscal policy alone can achieve in eradicating poverty and inequality in Namibia. The impacts of COVID-19 pandemic have the potential to reverse some of the gains made in our war against poverty. Looking ahead, government will work actively to consolidate social safety nets by automating processes to remove duplications and reduce transaction costs. We will also investigate the feasibility of gradually phasing out the food bank to introduce a modified basic income grant. We have made tangible gains in number of enrollment at vocational education and training centers from 16,000 in 2015 to 35,000 students index in 2020, exceeding the HPP target of 25,000 new enrollment. Additional, <laughs> additional building and upgrading of VDCs in different parts of the country commenced during the period under review. And this process will be completed in the next three years. Housing remains a challenge. However, delivery of service land, housing, and sanitation has progressed in line with targets set over the time. The HPP target to deliver 20,000 new houses was achieved at 82%, with delivery of 16,000 
464 houses by March 2020. These houses were constructed in collaboration with various stakeholders, including Namibia Housing Enterprise, GIPF, Czech Brothers Federation, built together a number of public-private partnerships. The delivery of residential urban was achieved at 90, 89%, or 20,194 plots of the targeted 26,000. The national housing backlog remains above 300,000 units. I am conscious that despite these achievements <coughs> and considering the persistently high national demand, we need to accelerate our efforts in the area of housing and land provision, particularly in major cities and towns. While the bucket toilet system was not entirely eliminated by the end of the period envisaged, we achieved an elimination of elimination rate of 74%. Since the degradation of humanitarian crisis in informal settlements, a pilot project has commenced in Vendu to transform very urban settlements into sustainable human settlements that are planned, serviced, and occupied through various tenor options. Urban land reform is both a moral and political imperative. Our efforts to restore dignified life will be incomplete without the delivery of decent shelter and sanitation. Rural economic development through delegation of key central government functions and decentralization of industries must be implemented in tandem as a means of addressing the factors driving rural urban migration. In this regard, I welcome the announcement by NAMPOWER to electrify informal settlements in Vendu. This is a positive start. I also commend private sector institutions that join hands of communities to deliver housing through initiatives such as Buy a Brick Campaign. This is a spirit of Harambe. Claims to ancestral land rights were extensively debated at the second National Land Conference. No consensus could be reached given the complexity of the issues. I therefore Appoint, appointed a commission of inquiry into claims of ancestral land rights and restitution by affected communities. The commission, led by Judge Shifa Witele, submitted its preliminary report in December 2019. The final report is due in June 2020, now, now this, month, this, this month. In 2015, government entered into bilateral negotiations on the general side with the Federal Republic of, Namibia, ah, of Germany. A special envoy, Ambassador Kavirwe, under supervision of a special cabinet political committee chaired by the vice president, was appointed. Good progress has been made. The Federal Republic of Germany has agreed, after a long article, that the events of 1904-1908 can verge of achieving total HIV HD epidemic control. In line with the triple 90 goals, our HIV response tends at 94, 96, 95. This means 94% of people who are HIV positive know their status. 96% are ARV treatment are on AIDS treatment, and 95% were really suppressed. As a result of this success, the prevention of mother-to-child transmission yielded encouraging outcomes, whereby 97% of babies born to HIV-positive mothers are HIV-free. The cooperation agreement between Namibia and, and the government of the United States through PEPFAR continues to materially support our HIV-AIDS management program, which has enabled us to achieve these gains. Following the outbreak of hepatitis A-E in 2017, 
we have mobilized a national response in 10 regions, providing safe water, sanitation, and hygiene, where cases have been reported mostly from informal settlements. A total of 7,703 hepatitis E cases and 65 deaths have been reported to date. While Namibia has done relatively well in its response to eliminate malaria, <coughs> the country is beginning to record some reversals with an upswing in cases following <coughs> last transmission session of September 2019 to April 2020. The increase is due to the good rainfalls and insufficient indoor residual spraying coverage. As we mobilize resources into immediate public health emergency of COVID-19, I caution stakeholders not to redirect all efforts and funding at the expense of other public health healthcare response. Maintaining a balance will be critical to preserving the gains made. Modern and reliable infrastructure is critical for high and sustained economic growth. The following infrastructure projects were completed over the term. The deepening and expansion of the port of Wolf's Bay, positioning our country as a strategic logistic hub and gateway into the region. The construction of Nekatel Dam was completed and inaugurated in March 2020. Current water levels in the dam stand at 86 million cubic meters, following the good rains. At full capacity, this dam will become the largest ever storage facility in the country. According to MTC, its telecommunications network has been upgraded from 2G to, 2, to 3G. To date, 83% of our population has access to 3G broadband services, while 34% have access to 4G services. A notable achievement considering the vastness of our country. I'm proud of MDC, which we inaugurated in 1994 with the Prime Minister of Sweden. Therefore, it is disappointing that network connectivity reliability is diminishing. Tim, these days, when you make a call, I have problems. So please also pay attention to that. The remaining roads at advantaged, advanced stage include the following dual carriage ways. Windhoek Okahand, Swako Point, Wolfish Bay, and the Windhoek Hosea Kutako International Airport, all due for completion during the second term. Significant progress has, progress has been made to increase the national road network and upgrade roads from gravel to bitumen standards. Over the term, an additional 819 kilometers of bitumen standard road and 373 kilometers of gravel roads were added to the national road network of more than 44,500 kilometers. According to the World Economic Forum, Global Competitiveness Report of 2019, Namibia remains number one in Africa for road infrastructure. <laughs> Securing electricity and water supply, both industry and household consumption was a material concerned at the onset of the first term. As a result of policy reforms in the energy sector articulated in the National Integrated Resource Plan, National Energy Policy, and National Independent Power Producers Policy, the country experienced zero load shedding over the term. We increased the electricity generation capacity from 400 megawatts to 624 megawatts. Additional demand increased to 730 megawatts, and imports of 390 megawatts are drawn annually through the Southern African Power Pool to bridge the deficit. 
Other supply security came under pressure due to the prolonged drought. Government took decisive action to constitute a com cabinet committee on water supply security that worked to guarantee water supply for the central and coastal regions, even in a no rain scenario. I express my appreciation to the members of this committee, chaired by Mr. Petro Maritz and the former ministers, comrades Mudorwa and Marusev, who ensured taps did not run dry during this critical time. Government intensified drilling of boreholes and upgrading water infrastructure across the country to enhance across access to portable water for rural communities that will face with water shortages as a result of the drought. Currently, 94% of the population has access to portable water. Mr. Speaker, fellow Namibians, Crossing over to international relations, the world is undergoing major transformations and our foreign policy must be ad adequately geared to dealing with these new challenges. The multilateral, multilateral order is the best guarantor for world peace. The Namibian government remains committed to strengthening the multilateral system through support for international accords and, pro and pro problem solving. During the period under review, we endeavored to strengthen mutually beneficial relations with friendly nations at regional, continental, continental, and international level through state visits, working visits, joint commissions of cooperation, political and diplomatic consultations. Engagements with dignitaries from Africa and the world demonstrate our commitment to bilateral cooperation to advance global peace and our domestic economic interests. The year 2019 witnessed Namibia hand over the SADC chairpersonship to Tanzania at 39 SADC summit held in Dar es Salaam on August 17, 2019. During Namibia's turn, we continue to witness significant progress in the entrenchment of democratic values and constitutionality in our region. The Kingdom of Iswatini, Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Madagascar, the Union of Comoros, the Republic of Malawi, Malawi and the Republic of South Africa held successful elections during Namibia's chairmanship. For the, for the first time since their independence, we witnessed a peaceful transfer of power in DRC, marking what we all hope will be a new era of prosperity, peace, and political stability in that region. The presidential election in Malawi was challenged in the court after which results were annulled. The date of June 23, 2020 has been set for fresh elections, proving once more that SATEC is committed towards the establishment of robust processes systems and institutions. We also witness the signing of the peace accord in the Republic of Mozambique, a further demonstration of SATEC's commitment to peace, unity, and stability as precursors for regional integration and development. There were challenges as the region faced several weather-related phenomena. We witnessed intensive flooding in Comoros, Mozambique, Tanzania, Madagascar, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and heavy rains in KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. Under Namibia's leadership, SADC member states reacted swiftly, displaying a regional solidarity to provide humanitarian assistance to affected countries. <clears throat> the world is currently facing a triple crisis, that of the health crisis, a climate change-induced droughts crisis and a consequential economic crisis. Fittingly, the United Nations has termed COVID-19 as the worst crisis humanity has faced since World War II. As, a more, as more nations seek to secure domestic security through inward-looking actions, international cooperation should be de-emphasized as our best option to 
mitigate trans, trans, transactional threats. We should work through existing bodies such as SACU, SADEC, and AU, and the UN to, to form regional, continental, and international coalitions that support the recovery of our countries in the aftermath of this crisis. Now more than ever, there is need for African countries to harmonize measures that strengthen our economies and create jobs. These efforts will require unity, commitment, and sacrifice. I have been in contact with world and regional leaders to discuss a coordinated response to COVID-19 in support of the evacuation of foreign nationals from Namibia and to facilitate the repatriation of our citizens and residents from abroad. I express Namibia's sincere appreciation to all nations that have supported, our, uh, supported us in this end. As we plan ahead towards economic recovery, we should be cognizant that economic diplomacy will be an ever important tool in the mobilization of international assistance and financing to foster recovery and growth. That brings me to the end of the first term of office report. As indicated earlier, the full report is available on your tables, I think, for your perusal. Mr. Speaker. I will now proceed to outline the national policy response to COVID-19. We have confirmation of the first two cases of COVID-19 in the country on March 14, 2020. I declared a state of emergency on March 17, 2020, and directed an immediate lockdown that lasted for 38 days. We also took the decision to cancel the 30th Independence Day public celebration, reducing the event to a smaller inauguration ceremony at the State House. The severe restrictions were warranted as preemptive measures to slow the spread of this and has end government time to strengthen the public health sector's capacity to adequately respond. Our multi-stakeholder efforts have not gone unnoticed and have garnered commendation by the World Health Organization and admiration, and admiration in international media. Infections flattened at 16 cases. We have now cases reported for 45 days until an uptick in new infections begin, beginning from 20 May 2020. The status of COVID-19 in the country today is as follows. 25 confirmed cases, 16 recoveries, nine active cases, a total of 4,270 persons have been tested. But thanks God, up to now, no lives were lost as a result of COVID-19. No lives have been lost. That we are told is the biggest achievement by others, not by you. Now maybe I opted for sta four stages we have corresponding measures to gradually ease lockdown restrictions. The country has just migrated to stage three under moderate precautions. The final phase, which is stage four, is estimated to come into effect on June 30. This will introduce a new normal that could last to the end of the state of emergency or beyond. The imminent reopening of border points for public traveling presents a key vulnerability. While life and business will have to return to some semblance of normality, this is a process with intent to manage very, very carefully. We have commenced work in preparation on the precautionary measures and adjustments that will allow 
for the gradual reopening of waters for public travel. For now, we are open for the transportation of goods only. I thank the ministers of health and information and their deputies who are keeping the nation informed through the COVID-19 information center. We made history. We made history. We made history with the appointment of the youngest deputy minister on the government. We are under government. We are under government. We have. Uh, uh, you can it's talk. Okay, I'm okay. talking for myself. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's 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 make let's make progress. It's okay. It's okay. Please. Please. Let's, let's keep order. <clears throat> Let me repeat my point. I thank the ministers of health and information and their deputies who are keeping the nation informed, informed through COVID-19 information center. They are the only ones who are doing that. The appointment of the deputy minister from opposition party was also welcomed and well received all of them. The two have been, the two have been running, and it's not a new thing. I don't know why you're surprising. We had deputy ministers here. Oh, 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 <laughs> I see. I do read the papers and I know what is going on. Okay. The two have been, the two have been running okay. the okay. information center effectively. This is a sign of the Namibian house we are building, where the youth and the opposition work together as one Namibia, one nation. I thank the Right Honorable Prime Minister and the entire government for pulling together during this time of crisis. An effective war is waged on multiple fronts. I would like to use this opportunity to acknowledge the hand of God who over, who, God, let me say, I would like to use this opportunity to acknowledge the hand of God over our country and to thank all Namibians and spiritual leaders who answered the call at the onset of the outbreak to pray for the preservation of our nation. As leaders, as leaders, we will continue doing all that we can to protect Namibian lives. Notwithstanding our successes to date, we must remain vigilant and maintain acceptable social behavior. Our people res residing in informal settlements are hard pressed to abide by the res regulations and are less able to insulate themselves against the economic effects of the lockdown measures. Despite these challenges, every Namibian has a personal responsibility to complete or to complement government efforts by adhering to the regulations. If social and physical distancing protocols are relaxed too soon, we risk secondary waves of infection. The big and small acts of kindness and benevolence not shown by different members of our society during this time have hardened us all. The act of charity is not only a commendable human trait, it is also a cornerstone of unity, united, peaceful, and prosperous country and nation. I thank all Namibians for the unity and solidarity, particularly frontline health workers and law enforcement agencies. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, despite its effectiveness, the extreme social distancing measures of lockdown comes at a great cost to the economy. Under the initial stage one lockdown, 
Domestic production was halved and jobs have been affected. While the virus may be deadly, we know that poverty also kills. The social evils of crime, substance abuse, gender-based violence, poor mental health, depression, and suicide are aggravated by poor standards of living and sense of despair. This understanding has informed government's response, which weighed the risk against benefits and drew a balance between protecting the lives and livelihoods of Namibians. These have not been easy decisions to take. However, I am convinced the cost of not acting would have been far greater. As a short-term measure to mitigate the negative socioeconomic impacts, government formulated an economic relief and stimulus package amounting to 8.1 billion Namibian dollars. This has provided relief to formal and informal businesses in some of the worst affected sectors, such as tourism and hospitality, fishing, construction, SMEs, and the informal sector. The package provides a plethora of responses ranging from reduction in interest rates to cash transfers, labor subsidies, and negotiated debt repayment holidays, and credit support to businesses, workers, household. Through the National Employment and Salary Protection Scheme, an emergency income grant, we are dispersing grants to employers, workers, and citizens who lost income or means of livelihood. The social indicators have been a source of encouragement. The number of medical trauma cases at hospital casualties declined drastically, while the Motor Vehicle Accident Fund reported no accidents on our national roads during Easter, because there are no cars in the road, due to the restriction on public travel. Although the number of gender-based violence cases reported at police stations show a decline during the lockdown, we are aware that the number of telephonic complaints received by lifeline increased under the lockdown. As Namibians, we have found common ground against this enemy. The economic crisis spurred by COVID-19 presents us all the opportunity to reflect and redesign our future. We all, we will use the lessons from the current challenges and reframe them into opportunities for recovery and growth. Together, we Together with the cabinet, I am in the process of finalizing the Harambe Prosperity Plan 2, which will provide a roadmap for accelerated implementation of government programs that are geared towards economic recovery in the second term. The plan will be informed by prioritized commitments from the 2019 Swapo Party Manifesto, existing fund funded capital board in the presidency to fast track investment promotion and SME development by facilitating a conducive business environment, investment promotion, and sustainable SME development. I will announce the head of this NED in due course. While economic crises are cyclical and recurring, nations succeed on the basis of work ethic rate of execution and ability to do more with fewer resources. We must transform the performance and service culture, as well as the level of productivity within public and private sector institutions to competitively reposition our economy. We must actively seek opportunities for growth, innovation, and transformation. More importantly, we must demonstrate strong commitment to implementing reforms. Global supply shortages in essential medical supplies presented an opportunity to, opportunity to our country. Supported by academia and the Namibia Center Institute, we have in a matter of weeks converted 
the productive capacities of SMEs to produce sanitizer, sanitizer certified surgical and non-surgical face masks. Such renewed domestic investment should remain viable beyond this particular crisis. In this time of crisis, true character is revealed. We are at a crossroads in our history, and in this year of introspection, at this hour of need, we are faced with the most burning question of our time. 30 years after our independence, how do we shape the future of our nation? Our collective decisions and actions over the following months will not only determine whether we emerge stronger from this unprecedented storm, but will define the Namibian journey. A journey conceived in the minds of colonized people from whom selfless patriots emerged and in face of unrelenting aggression chose to fight for the ultimate gift of life, health, peace, dignity, and freedom. I am convinced that the Namibian spirit, unrelenting in the face of adversity, unflinching in the eye of a storm, will once again prevail as we unite to overcome the challenges ahead of us. We cannot retreat in this battle. We cannot disown this fight. Neither can we reject the spirit of unity that has prevailed amongst the sons and daughters of this country. This is a spirit that defines our national identity. It augments the character of our people. It crystallizes the narrative of Namibian House. I, can, I am certain that if we work in unison, putting best of our minds to work, we, like those who fought for freedom of this nation, will be able to deliver our people in the second phase of struggle for economic emancipation. Yes. Let us not shy away yes. from the task. Yes. Let us not shy away from the task at hand. Let us seize the opportunity yes. to cement this to cement this nation's legacy yes. as a people who overcame diversity, mm. a people who persevered mm. in the face of difficulty, yes. and a people whose fortitude yes. and patriotism delivered freedom, unity, peace, and shared prosperity. Long live Republic of Namibia. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, on my own behalf and that of the Vice Chairperson of the National Council, and indeed members of this House, let me express our deepest gratitude and appreciation for a very informative, constructive, and inspiring message that the President has just delivered. We welcome your emphasis, we welcome the, your emphasis on measures to revive our economy during this difficult time. Indeed, these are challenging times, but we are the land of the brave. And together, as a United Nation of hardworking people, we shall overcome those challenges that you have outlined. Comrade President, your inspiring inclusive leadership will show, guide the country into a prosperous future. That's our hope, that's our wish. Members of this House, His Excellency, the President is now available for questions as per Article 32.2 of our Constitution, and during his interaction with the Honorable Members of Parliament, 
rule number 110 and rule number 118B of our standing rules and order will be in force. This emphasizes that members' questions should be relevant and not repetitive over, there, over and above that, and we are required to maintain order in the House as we normally do, and this has become our tradition, and I hope we'll be able to maintain that. Honorable members, I'll call, first of all, the leader of the official opposition to open the floor. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I always maintain one position, and that is that words in their nature carries meaning. Permit me to welcome the strangers of the House, Vice President, First Lady, Excellency President, ladies and gentlemen, and members of Parliament. We speak of an inclusive society. But I'm denied to meet the president of the country. What, is, what inclusivity do we speak about? What is inclusivity? How do you define it? But that is not the question. Let me go to the question. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, you happen to be the leader of the party that is in public office, ruling party called SWAPO. Excellency President, your organization through its own industry, is building nearly a headquarter costing nearly $1 billion. It would have been a very private affair had your institution or the party that you lead was not a party in public office. Your organization is building a $780 million headquarters. We have not seen your institution having seek local commercial loans to finance this office. If indeed you did, please explain to us. Or have you gotten international loans from which commercial banks you would be able to tell us? Because this is a question of transparency. The company that is building your party's headquarters is a company, is a company competing with various other tenders in the country. And we get scared that this company has offered to build this building for you, but what is the arrangement? Is the arrangement for it to get tenders? Or what is the arrangement? And I give it to you to explain. Secondly, because you lead that very party that is in public office, and in the context of transparency, there was allegations, credible allegations, that says your own political campaign in your party during 2014 was financed by Fishrod. There are evidence of bank accounts that we have, that we possess, that have been circulated on social media of some regional coordinators and youth league leaders that receive huge amounts of money. The allegation might be true or not but it is up to you to deny them. What I ask you, Mr. President, is why haven't you commissioned an internal investigation in your party to clarify the allegations? Why is it only left for the ACC or whoever to, 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 to investigate? Why is the party in public office not investigating such allegations of corruption in its, in its own ranks? Secondly, Mr. President, that, that, that should be the third, third now. One, yes, third question. Yeah. Mm. Rule 15, please. Your government knows that we have a backlog of over 300,000 houses. We propose the one Namibia, one plot policy. The high level panel on economic, the high, le high, le high panel on economic recovery that you put, made a very sound recommendation that it is true that we can be able to give equity and land to urban settlers, poor urban settlers for free. 
the budget that we have is not addressing the housing backlog and the need for land. Where is the government priority? Is the backlog of housing a tool that we used when we want to be voted? And when we are implementing budgets, we don't look at it. How are we addressing that recommendation of the High Economic Panel saying that we can give equity in the hands of the poor? Mr. President, farmers in the south of the country, in Omosati, Varamba, every, nearly everywhere in this country, Beersheba, everywhere, have lost large herds of cattle, of stock, cattle, sheep, and goat. Farmers are suffering. They have no SMEs to be given stimulus plan. What is your government? Together with affirmative action loan farmers that have taken huge loans, farmers that were hit by a seven-year compounded precarious drought situation in this country. How is your budget addressing? We are seeing farms being auctioned in, in newspapers. We are seeing farmers with no stock in, 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 in their country. How are we reviving the livelihood of agriculture, Thank which you. is the biggest sector? Thank Let you. That, that's question number four. Okay. I would yes, like to speak bring in. Don't uh, worry. Yes, let, let's go for round the second round. You can come back. No, no, please. No, 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 no. Uh, no, we, we, have, we have tried that, Mr. Speaker. We, we have tried. I have two one questions. more. Well, one more, and then we move on. Two please. more. Two yeah. more, and then I'm done. Because I know the strategy. Honorable President, the fishing sector. I stood alone, together with the fishermen over the years, until you came to the party to say that the fishermen must be rescued. But we are seeing companies getting fishing quotas, mafia-related companies getting fishing quotas. Government has reduced the amount of fishermen from, from 4,500 to 1,500 that will get jobs. What is the stake of the fishermen in the new allocation of, fish, or, or the fishing quotas, and how are the fishermen's rights that are going to be protected? Will your government be ready to take some hergy as a company to court, at the international court, to be able to litigate in the interest of lost income of those fishermen. Lastly, you spoke robustly about the genocide talks. Mr. President, we all have national and international contacts. I'm very alive and very aware to the fact that the Germans have put these talks on tenterhooks. They have already agreed on a quantum that they want to pay our people. And I will not, for the sake of the negotiations, I will not reveal the quantum. But I'm very alive to the fact that they are using a number of arguments, diplomatic arguments, together with absorption capacities and many others, saying that we must receive that. Let it be known to Steinmeier, President Steinmeier, and Angela Merkel, Chancellor, that we are not going to accept it. The question that I want to pose to you, Your Excellency, do you still have trust in these negotiations? Don't we need to recalibrate and re-strategize to make sure that we get what we want? Honorable President, Honorable Speaker, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Next. Um, I'm now using the, the system, and the next honorable member has their floor. I bear in mind that the names that are appearing here are not necessarily your names where you are, uh, and I need someone to help me. Uh, the, the Honorable Mukilongo, I think he's seated somewhere. Uh, is that where you are? Yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Your Thank you very much. Please. Your Excellency, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, allow me to present the question to His Excellency as follows. Mr. President, we cannot breathe. Chinese and Indian have has flooded our market to the extent of spoiling and foremost killing the local pieces in our country. Especially we can start from here in Windhoek. We were saving our Shops like uh, Outfit Shop, Otomio, Libelo, those, a quality shop that we have, was having in our country. They are closed down because of a Chinese. Selling their fakes. If you go to Oshivalongo, there is no more business for black people. In North, it's closed down. 
There is no more. People they were saving their depots, people they were saving their little shop closed down because of the Chinese. What is that uh, a crucial yes. what we have Chinese and Indian? They don't pay tax and they don't want to use our local bank. What is that if we owe it to this nation which we cannot return for them to leave Namibia? Mr. President, if you are unable to move or the order Chinese and Indian, please allow us to move them in order to protect Namibia and it is the people economically. We cannot have Chinese who are manufacturing, wholesale, and again retailing. They should leave wholesale and retailing to the Namibian people. Uh, in Africa, there was a, a man called Red Indiamini, Dada, in Uganda. This man was a strong man. I want you, Mr. President, I want to give you this power. I want to give you this power as a commanding chief of economic freedom fight in Namibia. I want to give you this power like India Amin. I want you to give, I give you this power only for 90 days to see this Chinese in Hosea Kutako Airport. Please, if it's not, we take action. Uh, Mr. President, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Member of the Pres Honorable Member, if Mr. President, you are unable to assist in this regard, we will organize Namibians to assist you. Namibia is all we have. <laughs> Not <in Tula. laughs> Uh, and the th second question is, uh, Mr. President, uh, the nation is hungry to hear from you. Can you tell us, are you a part of the fish lot or anyone in your family linked to this scandal? You are done. My last question. This morning, in uh, social media, there was a circulating that uh, you and some of your cabinet ministers, you are having a private meeting to close down in Namibia to replace with a, a private company. And that private company saying you're having a share. It is true or not? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank member. You. We move on to the next honorable member. The Honorable Mike Kavekotora. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I have a few questions. Some of the questions have already been taken over by my previous colleagues. My first question is, first of all, I want to congratulate the minister, the, the, Mr. President, for saving Namibia four billion Namibian dollars by canceling the, the tender that was awarded to China and whose prices were inflated. But recently there was another development. And it goes like, Mr. President, you went to China what the discussions were in China, we don't know. But on your return, it is, we are informed that the very same tender that was that were canceled, it will now be awarded to China. The question is, can the, minister, the honorable, uh, the, the president, Mr. President, confirm that? And if so, at what cost is this tender being awarded to China? My second question is the 
Mr. President, you also spoke about cancelling independent celebrations and so on. But it also it was also reported that you had a party for the birthday of your political party. And the opposition parties went to the police to report that you were in breach of some of the regulations of COVID-19. And in the beginning, there were denials, including a denial by the chief of the police, Mr. Daitunga, to say Swapo have done nothing wrong. Now, subsequent to that, Mr. President, you admitted and you apologized. And the rumor has it that either you or Swapo has paid $2,000. That is at the backdrop of individual members of the society who, if they were found by the police having breached the COVID, they pay individually an amount of $2,000. Now the question is, first of all, who paid the $2,000? Is it the Mr. President, yourself, or is it the Swapo Party? One. But the more critical question is, either Mr. President, yourself, or Swapo now has a criminal record. Does this breach constitute a criminal record? The question is, if it's you, Mr. President, why do you think that you still need to continue to be the president of this country with a criminal record? The second question is that Mr. President, you alluded to the fact that the 2019 elections were heavily contested. You might recall that my party and some others challenged the 2019 presidential election in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court effectively ruled that the use of EVMs without verifiable paper trail is invalid and it's unconstitutional. <clears throat> and that is what you, Mr. President, started off with in your speech, that you are here to protect and defend the constitution of this country. Now the courts, the Supreme Court of this country, through Chief Justice Shibute ruled the election of 2019 invalid and unconstitutional. Would it be strange, therefore, if people in some circles called you an EVM president? And lastly, Mr. President, in your speech you spoke about the discussions that you have with the German government. But the only outcome of that discussion after a long, costly exercise was an apology. The question is, does the apology justify the s and and the air travel between Windhoek and Berlin? And on top of that, it has been, we know that this particular motion came through parliament. But the German parliament 
in many, at many occasions, are actually throwing this discussions out of their parliament. Are we negotiating in good faith with the Germans? Are the Germans serious in this negotiation process? Or are we and your government just being paid lip service in this negotiation process? Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you. Next, Honorable Murorwa. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of this August House. Allow me to convey kind regards from the leadership of the member and the members of the UDF to His Excellency, Dr. Hage Kengop, the President of Namibia, and Madam Kengos, our First Lady, the Vice President of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, and Madam Mbumba, the Founding President, His Excellency, Dr. Sem Nuyoma, in absentia, and Madam Nuyoma, also in absentia, and also His Excellency Dr. Bohamba and Madam Bohamba in absentia. We wish you all a very good health under these trying times of COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. Your Excellency Dr. Kaingop, we thank you for the very swift action you took and the foresight you portrayed in trying to minimize the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the Namibian nation. We applaud you for the good work and the fact that your foresight and the grace of God the Almighty so far has spared the Namibian people from any COVID-19 related deaths. Your Excellency, it is our humble belief in the UDF that all development in Namibia are aimed at benefiting the people on the ground. We are specifically very grateful for the upgrading of the Swagopmund, Hendis Bay, Uis, Korihas, and Kamayab Road to a bitumen standard. Although the construction pace seemed to have been affected negatively by the COVID-19 pandemic. Your Excellency, we hope that the completion of this road will impact the economic livelihoods of this towns positively with the enhancement of the buying power in these towns by the flow of traffic users of, on this road. Your Excellency, it is however with grave concern that we learn that this road is to pass a few kilometers away from those towns and that the inhabitants of those towns are not going to benefit economically from the traffic flow near their towns. Your Excellency, President of Namibia, the same happened to Otavi town, and it, is in, it also nearly happened to Karabeb town, but thanks to the fact that this aspect was reviewed and positively reconsidered, the U-10 just after the flyover bridge near Karabeb was constructed, and today everybody can testify how busy the shops and filling station in Karabeb are thus providing a positive livelihood to the people of this town. I'm therefore pleading with your, you, your Excellency, President of the Republic of Namibia, that the designed route of the Swagopmun Kamayab Road be reviewed to go through these towns to benefit the people on the ground instead of next to the towns. In conclusion, Your Excellency, Dr. Kaingo, President of the Republic of Namibia, it is also with very great concern that we have noted that no appropriation has been made in this 2020-2021 financial budget for the continuation of the construction of the above-mentioned road which is, as we are speaking, halted some 18 kilometers from Hendis Bay en route to Uis. Your Excellency, Dr. Kengo, due to the upgrading of this road also, 
to a bitumen standard, the regular grading of the road is not being done at the required intervals, and this makes the road very unsafe for use by ordinary traffic. I therefore once again humbly plea with your high office to please look into the positive consideration for the refinancing of this very important development project. I thank you very much for your kind consideration. Thank you. The next is the Honorable Sey Seybep. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker, Ishitevi Kashavivi. <laughs> that time, yes, yes, that time the Vice Chancellor of the University of Namibia. I hope it's still in a good condition. It's still the same guy. Aha, uh -huh. that's good to hear. Now, um, Honorable Bernardo Swarboe, leader and chief change campaigner of LPM, the last man standing to defend the legacies of Captain Henrik Vedboe, Kwame Nkrumah, Marcus Garvey, and Chief Cornelius Corese. Some don't want to attend the Gaup Festival because they don't like Cornelius Corese. And of course, President Hage Kengo, I also applaud you, uh, especially the last part of your speech. It was very good, excellent. But I think next time you need to hire much more better script writers. I think this time the writers let you down a little bit. It's just a revolutionary advice. Now, <laughs> President Kengo, I'm just asking this as I recall my good friend Omep uh, Ahusa Kengo. My dear good friend who departed this earth, he was very dear to me. We drove, I remember, to Katima, to Rundu, traveling around the length and breadth of this country. But as Thomas Hope said, he died a brutish, nasty, solitary life. And I don't want that to happen under President Kengo's regime. President Kengo, having said that, we hope that the endless cry of the business community, in particular our SME sector, to see the long-awaited Namibia Investment Promotion Act that will see a real drive to grow local industries that will be enacted and implemented within this financial year. It must not pass this year. We must be intentional and patriotic as leaders in speedily implementing policies and measures to support local businesses, particularly our SMEs, especially in these tough, trying times. The merciless invasion of foreign businesses, such as criminal and corrupt Jack Huang, Stina Hu, in economic activities that can be done by our locals has been deliberately allowed in the name of competition. That must stop. We don't want anything to do with others that come and try to steal our people's resources. Being allowed by the deep state, of course, the kleptocrats must stop it. Yeah. President Kaingo, you have informed the nation that you are moving the SME development function of this ministry under your office with the establishment of the Envisage Namibia Board of Trade. Although this is a scary move, as we know your close deep state ties with the likes of your some dodgy character friends, we would like to know how soon this board is coming into effect. As well as once this function comes under the presidency, could you clarify if it will still be regulated under the Ministry of Trade and Industry, or it will function like the National Planning Commission, or completely separate as a unit under your office with its own regulations? We are also worried about the franchising bill. We can't allow a situation whereby monopoly franchises dominate this country and even prescribe to us what we should do. The concern here is the fact that the Minister of Trade allows monopoly franchising, who seems to have extraterritorial rights over a sovereign country and continue to block new Namibian entrants into some of these new lucrative markets. Uh, I take, for example, the Kentucky Fried Chicken. It must stop. Uh, MNZ, for example. No law in this world should allow a multinational company to dictate to a sovereign country the rules of engagement under World Trade Organization in the context of globalization. 
uh, crystal clear on this matter. The continued blocking of young entrepreneurs to access some of the lucrative franchise license undermines the territorial integrity of the country and, set, and sends a disturbing message. On the grape farming, this, uh, the last two now, on the grape farming, we know that the grape farming industry makes around about one billion uh, per year. Uh, I'm talking in particular about the awesome cat. Uh, I, I, the delegation carried by a young dynamic Dominga Andala. Last year, Anna took a visit to North Uber and Osenge, and, and she was walking. Apparently, you have a street named there after you, Dr. Hake, Gottfried, the first director of elections of Namibia, of Swapo, the first campaigner of Swapo, the first prime minister. Apparently, there is a long list of titles written there including you being a scholar, of course. Mm, of course. Now, the grape farming community uh, needs an urgent, I mean, an urgent housing. I know government in the past pumped in around about 100 million, but the people are still living in the reed houses. When the nature calls, they go to Orange River. How long are we going to witness that scenario? Here, the Honorable Bernardo Swarboy, whom you were not supposed to fire, he could have made you the rock star of a sub-Saharan African state. When he was the governor there, he fought hard at least for the development of the housing units to be developed there. Oh, okay. I, I can okay. hear the, no, no, I'm listening to the president, he's trying to say something. I, I, I've got, I've got two, two questions now. No, no, it's, it's not, uh, now, I'm advising, a revolutionary advice, just put in 50 million there, just to develop some housing units for those people. It's not good to see a fellow human being living in shacks. Whereas those guys there, the white monopoly capital guys, built a spa, they, they, people, uh, they built tops or whatsoever things, people are drinking freely there. Mm. But the workers go and sleep in shacks. So please, and, and, and when you, uh, uh, previously, when you were disturbed by yourselves, uh, don't, don't, don't advise uh, and only go and address the people from the cabinet. Because I overheard you saying that when you were a little bit angry, President. And please, this year, if COVID is over, attend the Damara Gaup Festival and Nama Festival. Please, because these questions are coming from Facebook. People are texting me to say, please ask the president to attend the Damara Gaup Festival this year. Remember when we were students, we used to visit you, and then you went to attend for the first time in your life the Damara Gaup Festival. Don't only run to Olufuko and, and, okay. and, and other things, okay. please. I, I, uh, okay. I, I, I so uh, submit. Uh, Honourable Speaker, thank you. Ishitevi thank you. <laughs> um, next, Honourable Dr. Iambo. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia. Dr. Hage Genkup, um, Honorable Speaker, Members of Parliament, fellow Namibians, otherwise I stand by the protocol already established. Let me start by with an 1890 quote by Charles Darwin. Scholars will be in the know as to who is Charles Darwin. Yes. You too. <laughs> uh, Charles Darwin is one of those guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> go Perus. <laughs> and I quote, it is not the strongest of species that survives, nor the most intelligent, neither the rich, but the ones most responsive to change. Charles Darwin, 1890. Uh, Honorable Speaker, His Excellency, the President of Namibia. Amidst the current COVID-19 pandemic, I recognize the need to address this plight, which I believe with our resources that at our disposal, we cannot go very far. Thus, the following questions. How does government plan to address the, this worsening debt problem, which future generations seem unable to escape? 
and who is to pay it for them if all our minds are used up? How far are we from borrowing from IMF for budgetary support and risk losing some of our sovereignty because of the structural reform conditions which will certainly be imposed? And I want to remind us that we all remember the educational structural reform of the IMF and the World Bank, which devastated Africa. We are in the know that an amount of 47 million was spent on lawyers in the United Kingdom to research about the genocide. What tangible, tangible findings or recommendations transpired from this exercise to support the ongoing dialogue with German government? And also, did the country get the value for the money? The fish rot negatively affected every Namibian in all corners of this country. The national expectation, national meaning, expectation from Namibians for the executive to pronounce itself so far resulted into very loud and clear silence. Doesn't the nation deserve further scrutiny and explanation? Um, if a Namibia gets liquidated or privatized, will it be a trend for all state-owned enterprises? Uh, the second last question. Are our intelligence agencies commissioned to investigate the origin of the deadly, uh, invisible pandemic. His Excellency mentioned the pandemic having destroyed humanity more than the two world wars. Is COVID-19 not an escapee from laboratories as a third world war? With those pertinent questions, I feel obliged to remind us all that we all collectively are part of the solution. And I thank you. Thank you. Next, the Honorable Dr. Winyangwe. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Thank you, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia. His um, Honorable Speaker, my fellow member here, Honorable Saipep, yes. told me that today, I am demoted. <laughs> I have two questions. Uh, the first one is also on the issues of uh, genocide and reparation, but not necessarily on the so-called bilateral talks between the two governments. Uh, it's more about, I recall, I think it was 2017, there was a meeting that took place at the State House between His Excellency the President and traditional leaders of the NAMA Traditional Leaders Association and the Ovahero Traditional Authority. Now, I remember that at that meeting, the traditional leaders made uh, some suggestions, and my impression was that his Excellency the President was very much impressed by the model that was put on the table. And I was um, very excited as well because His Excellency the President told the meeting that within two weeks or so, another meeting was about to be called. It is now almost three years and I'm still convinced, uh, Mr. President, that such a meeting <laughs> is very important. So my question is, is uh, His Excellency the President still planning to call that meeting? And if so, when would that meeting happen? My second question, last year I have learned that <coughs> The government of the Republic of Namibia was hard at work to repatriate Nama and Ovahero people from Botswana. These are people who did not choose to go to Botswana 
but they fled as per the extermination order of Lotha von Trotter. I have learned that there was a committee to organize their logistical arrangements and to facilitate the process of repatriation. My first question is, how far is that committee with the arrangements and is there a date already decided when these people will come back? How inclusive is this committee? I mean, are the members of the affected communities represented in this, com in this committee? If yes, how were they selected? And lastly, I'm very much interested to know that should these people come back to Namibia, which is, of course, their motherland, where are they going to be resettled? Are they going to be dumped in gum as well, like the others, while we know that gum does not have the necessary basic services and facilities? We are fully aware of the social, economic conditions in which these people are living. Thank you so much. Honorable Thank you. Speaker. Thank you. Um, for this round, um, I'm calling on the Honorable Matthias Mbundu to take the floor. Your questions, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable yes. Speaker. Um, the party is... RP. Yes, you, you may continue, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Your Excellent President of the Republic of Namibia, I and the Republic, the Republican Party of Namibia, uh, uh, with the people, so would like to ask the President to tell us what is exactly the agreement with the Chinese government, with the government of Namibia. Because if we can see the Chinese are scattered all over, so in the, in the Republic of Namibia. So secondly, People are asking that uh, your excellent president, using the, the private house, is the government being paying you private instead of using the state house? I thank you. Thank you. Um, your Excellency, uh, I think let's allow you the time to respond to those questions. Quite a number. Quite a number. And well, thank you very much. Firstly, the young opposition party yes. leader, official opposition party leader, thank you very much for your questions. You are asking me what do I mean by inclusivity. I even say that inclusivity spells harmony. Exclusivity spells conflict. All my life, I've been fighting for inclusivity and unity. All my life, when I had to join SWAPO, 62, I couldn't join because there was Swanu and SWAPO, and there were two. And I, uh, yeah, uh, and I said, and some were saying, Swanu is for Herreros, and SWAPO for Ovambos. And I said, which one do I join? join? I'm neither of the two. Why don't you unite if you are fighting for the same cause? They're into my, not in my And Late Kodongiri and Professor Gerina signed the agreement in 62, claiming, claiming that Swapo and Swano have united. Because of that, I joined. I said, now you are doing what I want to do, because why are we divided? We're fighting for the same cause. And then we have been working with Swanu. I was with Swanu, 
people in my house, they, it, 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 it's going to ask us as Windra. So unity to me is, is a sine qua non for building a country. Now to doubt, maybe that we are not serious about uniting, I don't know what is meant by that. Uh, one day apparently the Honorable Benane said that I asked for the post of the Vice President so that we can look at different ethnic groups and so on to balance, but apparently I'm only balancing of ambos. I, I, I don't know whether it's true or not. I, I thought that's happening, but, but, but the point is, I am for unity. I am for inclusivity. I will do my best to unite people. Because if you don't unite, there could be a civil war. Who gains out of that? It's difficult to unite people because there are different interest groups and so on. But we, the leaders here, must start. You are young. You are telling me, old man, I'm going to go. You will suffer. Unite. You are the ones who have to start to unite. Tribalism is carried out by young people, not old people. I'm telling you. I, wait a minute. You will answer. You know. I'm talking about tribalism today. Can I make my... When you were asking, I didn't go. I'm telling you, it is young people. To my surprise, they don't understand unity. If I can talk about my party or any if we are trying to hide that, I will tell you it's a young people. Okay, so let me just answer you, sir, that I believe in unity. I have been, I was brought up in completely uh, mixed communities, the farms, every, even of Germans. All the Germans, the farm I grew up earlier, they had to speak Damara and Herero. All the Germans, old ones, had to do that. We were just playing as kids, so I don't have a problem about uniting with black, white, or yellow. Only thing is, we must also share equally. Yes. So that's my motto. So if you agree, join me. That's my belief. I believe in Namibia, a small population, big country. Why can't we unite? So that's, that's how you can doubt it, but that's my belief. That's how I believe in it. A record is there to prove. Party headquarters, I, was, I didn't want to answer that. To start with first, it's none of the business of, of, of uh, I think, uh, anybody. Because, yeah, you know, it's a, uh, am I going to ask you about your house? This is, firstly, let, okay, let me answer, I preface it to make my point. Firstly, Swapo, maybe it's envy. Throughout about 30 years, we have been collecting money. We have, not you said 30 years ago, we started to say we must build our own party headquarters. And we have been collecting money. I will prove to you, we got 30 million from our own members. 30 million. I can show you, go and look at it. If you are not, if you are, if you are not swapo proper, you didn't pay. We are paying. We were paying monthly. Our, this is a dialogue yeah, now. Please, 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 let let uh, we we, we need to do it within a given time. But furthermore, I'm just trying to introduce how we want to do things for ourselves. I'm telling you, 30 million. I can prove it with the. I can prove it. You want to come and see, we can see it. When we're doing it, we said 30 million came from the membership. And then to tell you about who is building it. We said, I said actually, no loan from anybody. No loan from anybody. The house is built by Swapo Party Companies money. Swapo Party Companies, registered companies. Not illegal. Yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you ask, I'm answering now, you go do something else. We know that kind of reasoning, you know? Yeah, truth sometimes hurts. 
I am saying to go and investigate. It's open books. It's open books. We said no loan from anybody. I said that in a meeting. We must pay. Swap or part, the companies must pay. And we took money from them, 400 million, including that one, yes. Yes. We have shares there. What's the secret? That's your problem. Who cares? I'm telling, answering to the, I'm answering to the question. Let's have order, please. Please. Let's, let's, let's go through the questions orderly, please. Yeah. This is built by swap or swapers money. No loan even from a bank. And we advertise for companies to apply. It was in the papers. There was such, no such a transparency in this country than that one. Put in, in, in newspapers and those companies compete, competed. 40. It is true, maybe, yeah, there are 40. There is a Secretary General sitting here. So briefly, if you want to know that we can open the books, that is built by Swapo, where Swapo companies uh, money. Even just recently, I said in a meeting, we will never take loan from anybody. So that's the answer. So I say, ah, I'm giving you the answer. Unless you okay. prove me wrong, I can prove it to you. OK. Please, let's, let's... Then, uh, something about corruption. Corruption, huh? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Questions, yeah. Very good. Okay, firstly, about corruption. Fish rot. Firstly, Swapos, Swapos, uh, and I was advised by my lawyers not to discuss a thing which is in the court. That's what we all had. People are in court, this is in the court. But as for Swapo, we can give you the Swapo audited book. If donations were made to White Gold, we'll, let's wait for the case. The case is there, it's going to be out. It's public. People are in jail. Swap of members. They're in jail. The case is in the court, so let's wait. The second one, uh, you see what, what happened is that uh, when they were, that, that I have to answer. When somebody uh, said from uh, this company, the television group, they asked me a question. El Yesera. Then I wrote them. Just, just two, two questions. No, I gave them my history. To them, I, I can put it to you, who I am. And I told them, look, I had all chances. UN jobs, institute, paid D2 salaries. World Bank, when they are about getting this, I resigned from there and came back. So if money was a problem, there is another way I could have made money. At my age, I told them now, you, at my age, why should I, you have made me, a, not you, but people have made me a president. You're not a condition for president. Conditions for president. Why should I go and destroy that? I have only a few years to go. Why should I go be so stupid? I'm not stupid. So I don't need it. Huh? Please. Corruption is a thing some of us who started to work on corruption. It's mine. It's me. I fought for that under corruption commission to come into it. It was opposed. It took time with uh, Rubel and us working on it. Four years it took. You. <laughs> so, as I said, this is a case in the court. It will be open court. Things are going to be revealed. Why are you in a hurry? It's the, 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 the courts. Are you not going to say if I, as a president, will interfere? That I'm interfering with the judiciary? 
You wouldn't say that? You? Simo, I would like to cry too much. Are you not going to say that? As for, as for Swapo, we, I don't know why they want to talk about Swapo, but I, I know that that's a recognition that we are a super party. Because, because yeah, you were Swapo, you were correct, maybe you were there, they kick you out. <laughs> that's the reason, maybe. So you were there. <laughs> Yeah, we can follow up very soon. Anyway, anyway, you see, when we just use the word corrupt, corrupt, no, no, let's, let's, let's it doesn't make it serious. It's a serious crime. So if you play around with it, it loses the meaning. If you overuse it, I said it long time ago, don't call anybody just corrupt. Even a corrupt and say, ah, that's what they always say. But if you use the word carefully, when you say Sabeb is corrupt, which is the case, then you will shiver. <laughs> then you will shiver. <laughs> okay, I said if. Okay, okay. If English language is very clear. But you were shouting me, I'm corrupt. You were shouting no. there. No, it, 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 no, is, I'm not is it directed to, to you? Withdraw what? Oh, I said what? if no. English language is very. No. Uh, but yeah, you were calling me yeah. corrupt. He said probably corrupt. No, no, no. I didn't say probably. I didn't yeah. say probably. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think, I think. Uh, no, no, no. You have been calling us the whole day corrupt. You have been. So you are two then. Let, let's deal with the issue. Then. Uh, Did. Okay. Okay. Please. Yes. Please assume your seat. I'll, 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 let, let's deal with that. Oh, yes. No, no, because you need to be seated, please. Never, never. No, no. Th that is the. Yeah. No, no. Just be seated first. I don't. Did, did, the then you, did you actually refer to, to the colleague as being corrupt? I said if. Huh? Go and get the recording. If. We are civilized. Go and get the recording. No, no, no. I will not go. No, no, no. I will not, I will not withdraw unless we withdraw calling us. I'm Swapo. I'm Swapo. No, no. I'm please, swa please. Two of you are talking. What kind of let's, behavior is this? Let's, How are you let's have order, please. Two of you. Look at this. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. No, no, no. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you the word, the, the word, the word use, the no, 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 no. Please, please. Yeah, yeah. The word, the word, the president, the, the, the president, according to the people who are close to him. No, 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 no. Wait, yeah, please. No, no, no. Please, let's have order. Let's over. You are just talking, talking, talking. You cannot teach me anything, by the way. You can't teach me anything. The president used the word if. That is the underlining. Can I, can I, can I ask? I never withdraw anything I didn't say. I cannot withdraw a thing I didn't say. No, 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 please. Let's, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Yeah, let's calm down. No, 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 you, no, 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 sit down, sit down, let me, let me, let me tell you, normally if an unparliamentary language is used, you, no, 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 parliamentary language, it must, because it be recorded, it will be recorded, it will be on the records, no, no, I'm just saying, no, no, let me, no, I, Yes, yes, no, no, but the president did not imply, did not imply you, Comrade, Honorable Comrade, Sekou, Comrade Speaker, these things are recorded. Yes. They are recorded. Yes. Go and listen to my speech. Yes, yes, yes. This is okay. recorded. I'll, okay, let's verify. Let us verify that. 
No, no, we'll verify that. Yes. We can, do, no, please don't shout. Don't shout like that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Please calm down. I, no, no, no. I will undertake. I will undertake. I will undertake. I will undertake to ensure what language has been used. I ask the two, I ask the two officials here, what did they hear? And they just confirmed to me because they are nearer that if, the word if, yes. If, if. Go and check the recording. No, 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 no. The word, the, uh, please, 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 please come. We, we will not, can I just say this? In, in any case, in any case, that, yeah, in, no, no, wait, please, wait. wait. This is a normal, normal approach. No, 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 please. A normal approach when there is doubt, we have to verify the facts. And there's no way we can get into a records now. That, but that's something we are going to verify. I will undertake to verify that to make sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. Please, please. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Please, please. Yeah, yeah. Comrade President, please, can you continue responding so yes, we can finish? Uh, Mm. No, 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 please. As I said, when the, when the people of the, that company asked, I told them that. And since the case is going on, invest it will be a public trial. Why don't you wait? People are in jail. As for SWAPO investigation, I don't know internal what you mean by that. That is our own business. We have already met. We had a meeting to review. We released as a year of introspection. Not only this, but we had, I met a long, but that's SWAPO business, that we must look into all the things, including results from the elections, Look at what we have done, that's, that's our own. You will understand that. And then uh, the uploads, I agree with that. It, it was about to be done. There is even a, still an issue going on since the young people occupied the land as I was coming in office. We agreed with them. And that has been going on. It will be done. We agree with you there. Land plots, free plots, even the high, high level panel I had proposed that. That has been started. But then all of a sudden you get COVID. What I call independent intervening, intervening variables. You are doing this and it is an independent variable and therefore it diverts you. Then, how are we assisting farmers by drought? Yes, farmers are assisted. assisted. Firstly, land uh, agricultural bank was approached, or not approached, but decided for those who own the farm loans to give them grace period. That is, I think three months, what is it? What, huh? Yeah, yeah. That goes a long way, thank you very much. That goes a long way. <laughs> so that's the answer. You are saying one said one year, that means attention is paid to it. Two years, one year. So attention is paid yes. on the farmers. What will happen to unemployed fishermen? Firstly, the fishermen that you are claiming, you are talking, you are talking about them. 
That is a blatant untruth. Well, it's your word. No, no, no. That's not true. That's, that's not true. I had, I had town hall meetings. I was in Swakopmund. No, no. I, I had town hall. I had town hall meeting. We'll get the dates. Yeah, yeah. We'll get the dates. This is a recorded. Please, please. Yeah. Yeah. And I do too. Yeah. I am saying, don't, don't, don't give me the ultimatums too. Mm. I said I had a town hall meeting at which I was confronted by fish, fish, uh, fishermen. Fishermen con confronted me there in town hall meeting. We discussed, we debated, and I told them, firstly, you went on an illegal strike. No, it's not. Uh, please, let me talk. No, yeah. Illegal no, strike. Please. Illegal strike. And you didn't consult me that time. Now you are saying I'm not doing anything. I had, 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 had my presence at the, what is it called, town hall meeting. That thing came up. That is before these new developments, where they were fighting with me. So I was involved in that. I said, okay, we'll look into that. But it was at the public town hall meeting in Swakopmund. So unemployed fishermen already, I think, you must have read how they, were, how they are going to be reinstated. Some companies were given extra quotas with the condition that they must absorb those people. 3,000, I think they've already been out of the issue. Minister? 1,300. Yes, and the rest are still lined up. Even yesterday, Fisher, Minister Fisher was saying that they are on the line. They are on the, he's going to absorb, he was on TV talking about it. So the issue is being addressed. Yeah, 1,300, 1, yes. Those are now being considered. By 1,000, there were 3,000, I think. 5,000. 5, so already about 1,300 been employed. Companies were given quotas for a purpose that they must pick them up. That's a condition. Well, quotas are, are just being given to dubious companies. I don't know. What we are doing is to publish. We already told the minister to be transparent. We must publish. No, it's even first to cabinet to, to publish, including the names of those who are holding, holding shares. You will be surprised. And then genocide, since two people have a serious matter to ask, ask it. Firstly, uh, I am not supposed not to say that this, but the uh, genocide issue has moved now. And I'm told the vice president is the man in charge. So, I got a report, just yesterday even, how far they are now. And it is said, Germans came around about genocide as a concept. It could be that kind of a thing, but they say it was post-World War II phenomenon. But they have agreed, as I was trying to define it, I was trying to say that um, whatever it is, if they were targeting group of people, whether it is new or not, it happened 100 years ago, that turned amounts to genocide. So that is now accepted, I'm told. And then, if you did something wrong, you must apologize. And that, they have agreed, apparently, to come at a higher level to apologize. Maybe here in the parliament, we're saying that's the best. I hope we're not going to attack them talking. So that's 
also online then apparently do good. If something was wrong, you apologize, you must do good. That's now about either money or projects or whatever. They are there now. But apparently to do good in the areas where there are people, the areas are named actually about eight areas or eight or seven, where it is said where descendants are living and they must address those areas by developing whatever and so on. And that is going to come. I hope we'll also invite everybody to have an input. As you can see, we not, no, no. Uh, as you can see, with the land conference we already started about the uh, construction of some kind of shrines in areas we know where people were killed or there was some serious thing. Starting with the house of that Chief uh, Hosea uh, Kutako, that is done, budget was put after the land conference, we, the drawings are done, approved, but this issue interrupted that. So that is a thing we must stand together. I said we shouldn't give the Germans a chance to laugh at us. I also said that meeting to go maybe to her. I said even if we are going to agree with Germans, and if only about 1,000 Herero speaking people or Nama, I said we're not part of that. That's not going to solve the problem. So Germans shouldn't laugh at us. Therefore, it should be that we hold hands. That's where I can jump to cover the same thing. We had that meeting. Firstly, the meeting was called because of two of us were friends who parted, Rogoro, Rogoro and I. So yeah, we didn't, we're not seeing each other, you know. So uh, I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> so I said, you must come to my house as a family with your wife, may your soul rest in peace, so we can meet as families, not discuss. So we did that. And after that, and I, we, we got Ben, so look who was involved, yes. families. Yes. Thereafter, I then called that meeting. That meeting, and there we discussed, I said there will be no uh, way of having trilateral kind of delegations. There will only be government's delegation, two delegations, is government to government. But we must have our people to join government delegation, and that way we can move together, not to give the Germans to laugh at us. Okay, and there was a question to remove uh, my professor. I said, that's a man I respect. I asked him to come. He came. I will not humiliate him. So we keep him, go around him. I, I, I was never given an offer of deputies. I had it through grapevine. grapevine that apparently the group went back and agreed that they would accept uh, Kaviroy and come under him, but could there be two deputies? That was not said in the meeting. Then when I heard that, I said, okay, uh, that's not the issue we've agreed, but Vice President must now continue, because I've other things to do too. So Vice President was continuing. I think he met some people, and I can call a meeting anytime, Madam, no problem. If you ask me to do that, I can call a meeting, and we can go, because it's now getting crucial. And Germans shouldn't get a chance to escape and say, we are disagreeing. So I can call a meeting, and that we can go and just report. I will, I will get people and question to come there and report and see, way forward, how do we do it? That's how I can answer about that. The thing we must take seriously, not to, not to look like we are divided, And so with those two, oh, yeah, with nobody supports the offered amount, I think. First, they offered one 10 million euro. Honestly, an insult. Insult. We said that's an insult. Now, there is something else, but when we call the meeting, they can tell you there what it is. 
and then we can move on because I would like us to be together. Uh, German shouldn't make issue, I cannot say it diplomatically. Diplomatically, they are saying something about me, but that's all right. But I don't want us to be, I will tell you privately, divided by them. Germans. Now divided by Germans. Divided by Germans. Divided by Germans. Divided by Germans. I will invite you to genocide. That's what I'm saying. That's what I said. Well, you see, you don't pull a person. See, if I say, come to me, you don't come, what do I do? I want to drag you. Come to the meetings. Mm. What effort do I need to make? Mm, mm, you must just come please. and solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. No dialogue. Mm, mm. Mm. Yes, no foreign companies must not be allowed. Oh, this is the, is it the same, these things. You finish. That's different. Oh, but, but the honorable, yeah. Then he does, now Muyongo now. Now it's finished. Okay, the Muyongo, Murongo. Murorwa. Murongo. Yeah, Mungulongo, not Murongo. Chinese, chase them out. Bring your horses. If you are saying you will do it. Okay. The power you gave me, give it to me. First, I didn't bring Chinese here. Chinese came like any other foreigners who are coming here. They came like any other foreigners, maybe 10 years ago or so, on, or 20 years ago. So, so if you are saying, are you going to listen or what please, do I do now? Please. First, comrades, uh, not comrades, not comrades, all of them. We are talking in public place. And we are saying, chase them out, Chinese and Indians. Everybody's going to hear that. Namibians were helped by these people. Whether you were there or not, they did help us. They are people. These countries were helping us during the struggle. I'm just saying, is it good? It's also a uh, racial, it's also a racial thing. Hmm? Okay, if you want to say it, I'm not going to do that. We have invited, we are having everybody here in this country. And if Chinese are killing our people, as I said, I went to China when I was a minister of trade. When I was in, uh, North, I was, there was never a fight between Namibians and Chinese. And I said, comrades, give me a chance. That's a big power. Let me go and tell, as a minister of trade, I went and told them, look, your people are not behaving well in our country. They don't pay required level of salaries, no overtime, and therefore, and also are competing, competing with the small people small people, yeah. the, we talk about investment, but not you to come and compete with our small. Yeah. I said that. And then after that, Chinese answered. Okay, uh, we opened up okay. our country 30 years ago. There are some private companies too who go on their own. But government, government companies will be controlled. But he said there are good Chinese and bad Chinese, as you maybe have bad Chinese, Namibians and good Namibians. And therefore, if Namibians break your law, if they break your law, let your law take its course. Foreign Minister of China came here, in English he addressed people and say, obey the laws of Namibia. And same thing we discuss daily, if they break the laws, and, and I said as an African, problem with us is people come, no, the Chinese told me, when I told them, that capitalism, what is going on here? They said, look, we have changed. But whoever comes here comes on our terms. Chinese told me that. And I keep on using that. Why did we allow people to come on their terms? 
Whoever comes here must come on our terms, Africa as a whole. So that's what we are saying. If they do something wrong, we allow them. You will be telling a lie to yourself. It's you. So mixed economy is what is required in our constitution. So you cannot just go and say, no, company must come here when I come to invest. They must not come and do wrong things, that's the issue. When I was a minister of trade, I was telling people to come and invest in Namibia. And they are doing that too now, others. So the question is they shouldn't come on their terms. They shouldn't invest in certain areas. The law was being amended when I was there, where we identified first essential goods like uranium to belong to government. It's quite controversial. And then also to, to reserve certain things to Namibians. That bill was delayed. I left the trade. It's not yet. It pay, it's passed now, huh? Yeah. So that's... We have to do... I don't... I don't I'm not in a parliament. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing about we shouldn't have the foreigners to come here and so on. But we're not the island, comrades. Ah, honorable members. I don't think we can say we must just close our doors. Look at what this pan pandemic. Well, it's cooperating. It is teaching us to hold hands. But they shouldn't come and do things as they want. They should obey our laws. But when you talk about these Chinese who built the brewery space, the breweries near Otabi, Orongo Cement. We talk here Chinese, but when you are going to see companies, partnership with many Africans, Namibians, blacks. Yeah, we will reveal these things. And I don't see anything wrong, but it's true that some of the people who are talking Chinese, Chinese, are partners of Chinese in some companies. Yeah. Then next, we now go. I think I'm taking too long. Honorable, okay. if I didn't answer next. all the questions. <laughs> it really, if you get right, I can answer you. But I tried to answer, and if I really left out, it's not because I want to leave it out. I, uh, next, we have EF, if, oh, Chinese, I answered. Mike. Firstly, the airport. This is a China airport. Hmm? Tender. The current one or the one I stopped? Hmm. What we are doing openly, openly, publicly, is that Chinese, as people, not the company was involved, but Chinese are interested. And we, Comrade uh, Kale, negotiate, if you want to build, you have never done anything here for us, as we've done other, other countries. So why don't you give us good, good conditions to build that airport? Negotiations are going on, it has gone down to what is called as good conditions. We are still studying that. We never agreed. There is no agreement, by the way. No agreement. We are looking at the conditions, and with these problems we have, if they, if they are good, like a discount of close to about 40 or 30 or 50, then I think you will agree with me that it will be a good deal. Even from that amount of 7 billion, already is down to about 3 billion only. So there was something, and therefore, if it is a good deal, I will invite you and ask you, do you ask, I'll do that actually. So here are the conditions. Do you think we must accept? It does, I can do that. So that you can see, we don't have to do secret deals here. But if the deal is good, maybe they are a little bit embarrassed, and they want to come and reduce the price, give us a grant, which we're discussing because we don't get grants, because we are too rich. So that, is, that would be the case. And we'll make it, I will make it a point to ask Minister, new Minister of Finance and Kale, 
to come and discuss, show you what is, what is no secret. Huh? Now, if they are giving, you see, if you are good, agreeing with the government to government, so they can benefit. If you are going to get 30% uh, uh, grant, or 40, you, will, you will agree. That's far cheaper. Common sense. <laughs> I, I, I will draw that. I, I will draw that. <laughs> okay. Uh, UDF, UDF, thank you very much. Oh, Mike, oh, okay. Oh, Chinese and then airport and then birthday party of Swapo. I don't know how many of you are former members of Swapo. We are very proud of Swapo. I don't know how many of them are members of Swapo. <laughs> Their comrades were asking me. So, 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 you could, so you couldn't expect us. You couldn't expect us not to recognize that day. Yeah, okay, we're coming. We, are, we already agreed to that. What is that? Yeah. But we had to recognize that day. And it was not our intention to have uh, uh, people who came as essential workers. If you have three presidents, president, vice president, prime minister, deputy, former president, it's a lot of people. Security, who are known as essential workers. So, only reason we have accepted the guild is because there was a cake and, and, and uh, what happened is that uh, people were seen now. They didn't observe the, observe the rules, distancing, social distance. That's why we thought it was wrong. They were, they were, they were now delimited there. As you said, now delimited. It's a record being played. So, so we said now to give the example to other parties who are breaking the law. Let's accept to set the example to the ruling party. So you want to do the same too. Many of you were caught. Some of you had a funeral or something like that. Yes, <laughs> over, over 50 people. No, no, everybody swap. <laughs> okay, then we help me. Is this next? next? Who? To us, to us, to us, party doesn't have body and run around to go and pay. Somebody must pay. You couldn't have swap to go and pay. Do that, that swap have legs to run around? <laughs> Somebody has to pay, and those who are in charge, somebody in a social organization will organize it. Who? Leaders were only 10. Leaders were only 10, but I told you there were other essential workers. No, 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 no. I, I, I think... Well, anyway, I that's a thing. Let, let, let's stick to the questions. Now we come to UDF. Germany, this one, yeah. Are the elections. Well, I, re I really don't want to answer that because it doesn't make you answer that question. The court said that the elections, uh, the request was to rerun the elections and throw out the, the point was to rerun. And the court said, although there were no uh, variable, what you call paper, they didn't throw out the, ask the election to be rerun. And the same judge, same judge swore me in. The court, the, the court, the people who went to take the case didn't say there were irregularities in elections. They didn't say that. They didn't say that. Therefore, they are saying the election cannot be nullified because there were no irregularities. And go to the court. The court allowed, they swore me in. 
The chief judge is for me in. So why do you have to answer that kind of a question? <coughs> but why are you sitting okay. with me here? Okay, I... I, I but why are you sitting with me here? You call me president. I, I don't think we should continue with the dialogue. Yeah. I think with the pre pre president, co co continue to answer those questions, please. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, please, Mr. please. President, Mr. Yeah, president. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let me go to this one now. Ah, do, do you have? Honorable Murorwa. Uh, you do have, thank you very much. You were the ones who really remind me of the days I was a parliamentarian, where there was, it doesn't matter. I looked at some, I looked better than some who are older, younger than me. I know, I see there. <laughs> UGF, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your polite and parliamentarian way of doing things. So thank you. About the, the, the road, very important road, when you're talking about developing our country, uniting our people, that's a way that we have a rim. Roads that have to round all over the country. So I'm glad that you are saying that, that roads are very important. Only thing is bypassing the towns, you are saying, but Modern way is basically you have to have a bypass and not go in a center of the town. You will see they eventually come and build. Right now, for Vendu, they are trying to build a bypass so that you cannot come in the city with big trucks and so on. So, so as you said, that brings development. And those areas which are neglected, they have that kind of a road will bring development. Yes. Uh, they can always, of course, have a, we will discuss it, yes. but definitely the modern way is to build it to bypass the cities. Mm -hmm. It will grow one day. We are planning for tomorrow, not today. <laughs> well, again, Saibab, Mr. Honorable Saibab. What did you ask? <laughs> Very complicated. Hmm? Yeah. What did you ask? Huh? You are ready to help me. Oh, Osun Osun Kefama, I just agree with you completely. I was there. I was so disgusted a long time ago, and I thought by we were in in in, in the in the grass grass. What you call? Still. No, I, I definitely, that one, we must ask all of us and just see to it that conditions must improve. All these years. Oh, for the first time. I know, you know I'll get you. You are just young people anyway. <laughs> so that is good. Uh, about, it is one thing we agreed on. Why not? The board, what is the board thing? Investment, yeah. That, yeah, that is going to come, but we have to do certain things to regularize the overlapping of laws, you know, things that, before we do that, and get, it will be an independent board. It will be an independent board where we are fashioning it on the basis of Rwanda's board. They did a very good thing, and they gave us advice. The lady from there came, we sat with her, and that's what we are trying to follow. But it will be transparent when we appoint somebody and then new board should be announced, modeled on Singapore and Rwanda. Rwanda. It will be independent, of course. It will, it will, it will reside under presidency. But it will, their own board. You will put you there. And then, okay, we agree on that one thing at least. Which was the second one? Housing. That's what I said, we agreed. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm going backwards. Thank you very much. 
then but you, you, you are young, but you look like old people. The reason you like old people. Uh, yeah, but the reason. Swanu, oldest party. Who said survival of the fittest? Who said survival of the fittest? Well, he was saying Charles Tarrant counted him and ended there. And so, okay. Very good. Survival of the fittest is what he started with. And what is it? What is it? I, I think it was the question of debts. Or oh, our debt. First, the minister, myself, cabinet, we are all concerned about ballooning debt. Very much. We had, we had only local debt, basically. Our local debt was 72 in the beginning. But after, when you are planning, something else comes, and because of that, <coughs> The debt stock, which is now even bypassed that of the SATEC uh, threshold, that of 60%. We, therefore, minister, we had to decide to have only one year budget so that we can do something during that time to definitely bring it down. It is not acceptable. It is because of independent intervening variables, as I say. We didn't expect the, the, the as we were planning, expect the drought, the downturn, down, downturn of the economies, commodities, and so on. Then you had the drought, three years, as I came in, drought, and then now you have this. Those are all independent variables. We didn't plan for that. It came now, we have to divert. First, we say, I said about three, three billion to spend on the drought food. Now we are going to spend money on the this thing, carpet. So unfortunately, we are caught up in that, and I can agree more with all of you, that debt is not sustainable. We must have to do something to reduce it. Okay? We are together there. And minister didn't, you see, consolidation that we had, of that, it looked bad, but if we didn't apply that consolidation, which made people lose jobs, we could have no worse situation. So I admit this debt is not manageable. We must just do something to reduce it no, by all means. Yeah. Your plan is coming. Noto, I answered part of the question, but, huh? Oh, that was the cost. That part of the... <laughs> that, that will be part of the whole thing. Firstly, I would like to... I was asked about unity. And I would have liked to have been applauded by my brother here that I can take somebody from opposition to come to government while independent, nobody will say to, to join Swapo. And was condemned, so I don't know why. So that's part of trying to have people to hold hands that we can pull in the same direction. Why should that small thing be attacked? So that's the way, as I said, you who are sitting here, you're not enemies. I said that. Your enemies are the poverty that we're fighting and DB. Yeah. So I said that. Are you enemies? Political enemies, maybe. Well, that's not good. Anyway, I'm trying to be serious to say, really, uh, as we are building Namibia. Let's hold hands. Let's belong to different parties, but know that this is the only country you have. We destroy it, we all suffer. Air Namibia, yes, Air Namibia must be liquidated, man. We have a very serious problem with Air Namibia. Yeah, I, let me tell you one thing. Were you in Swapo that time? Maybe, yeah, maybe in Swapo. 
If the long term agreement must be swapped. Off. Firstly, in Namibia was bailed out, bailed out. Liquidation, or whatever it is being considered, is one of the things. First stop in roads like the Frankfurt one, some don't want that. But it must be restructured. And if liquidation is a thing, we must do that. It is not making any profits. Just being bailed out, bailed out, no. We must do something about it. Agreed. Very good. What else? Oh, please, to say that COVID was uh, from in the in the laboratories. I'm not a I'm a political scientist, but not a national scientist. So that's for you guys. To say something was made in a laboratory, that's beyond my oncology. <coughs> huh? Do you want me to waste money on investing to investigate where COVID comes from? To pay billions for that? Let other people do it with money. You'll get the results. Seriously speaking. That's not how we can spend money. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, about, repeat, oh, yeah, about the, the, the people, our people from Botswana, firstly, I don't have full information on that. But what I know is that there's always been a talk that they must come back, those who want to come back. Botswana, under, so let's say, under Kamas, what you call, talk to me about it, about cattle, as it happened last time too. We said they must come back, those who want to come back. That's where it is. Uh, maybe slow, they have to renounce their citizenship there. They were also talking about these our citizens, we educated them, and all kinds of things were said. But those who want to come back must come back. But is anyone and else? maybe we'll give you a feedback. I cannot say where we are now. If they are coming, where are they going to be? Leaders, leaders. I went to Gam. As what as a minister, when I came there, I said, "Why are you all just here? Why don't you spread out to be in all other regions?" By that time, the feeling was that they wanted to be together. So we wanted to we have to ask them maybe, but people must go and be resettled anyway. But if you are coming from some other place, you are a little bit worried. You don't know how it is going to be. So you want to stay with those whom you know. That's why that is happening. So either to uh, buy farms around there, because there is a standing policy to buy farms adjacent to uh, settlements. So if they want to stay there, but to, to integrate our society, we must also encourage that they must go anywhere to be resettled properly. But if that fear is there, we must also accept that and maybe see to it that we can maybe expand the, the area. Although the, it's not a good area, I know it's tough. And, and the ZAN uh, daily complaints. I have a case now uh, about people who went with cattle, cattle taken. That thing is still there with me. Between Herreros and the, and the, and the and ZAN, huh? Yeah. I was told that, that name is not a good name. You have to give no name. San means apparently, means apparently Southern African natives. I didn't know that. So we have to look for a better name, maybe. Uh, then uh, Republican Party. Nice to see you. I'm, I'm impressed. The democracy has increased. It's not one party state. There are now many here. <laughs> The Republican Party, what is it? Agreement with Chinese, same thing. What was it? Chinese, yeah. Chinese question, I would answer, sir. Yeah. But as to where I stay, you know, when I was in exile and I was coming back, I 
I would never send government house. And I built my own house, that time as a prime minister. Right now I am using both, but I say more for reasons that dealing with intelligence and security even. I don't want to discuss, but I do what you call. So I have my house, I'm very proud of my house. And some people are retiring after 30 years as a minister or so, not a house. Not your own house. Not your own car. Come on. We must plan. <laughs> Where is your car? We must plan to retire. I have already four years and, and a half before I go. Plan for retirement. So that is part of my stay in my house too, but there are other reasons. Uh, huh? It's not finished. Huh? Help me, it's finished. Uh, <clears throat> that was the last comment. Oh. If I didn't answer you all, please, a very effective stuff. If I didn't answer everybody and you want to follow up a letter, we'll answer you. Yes. Uh, can, I, can I come in at this point and simply to say, I, I, I think we've gone through the list and I just want to check whether there's any political leader who did not have a chance to ask a question. I, any, any, anyone? I was asking my uh, desk. I think it was uh, a APP, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? CDP. CDP. Yeah, okay. Now we 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 are not going to force. We are not going to force them. <laughs> let me let me yeah let me do this. Um, we we have gone through the first round. Um, can we can we take pressing questions? Not long, but a question. I have the Honorable Maharukwa there. Um, please, because we want to make it brief so that we can conclude. Yeah, no, you don't vote, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Th thank you, Honorable Speaker, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Honorable Members. Uh, His Excellency, I have but four questions. And can you, can you make it two, please, so that we can take other I, people I th in? I think they are all pertinent, and I'll be very brief with all of them. But, but these questions, on uh, His Excellency, are premised on the following. Uh, they are premised on the fact that I've engaged, I believe, in at least as far as three of them, the ministers that those questions are relevant to, and I have not had a satisfactory answer. And I'll explain in each and every circumstance what I mean. First question, on, on, um, His Excellency, is that roads in this country are killing people. It's a fact. Road accidents are killing, are killing people. It's a very, very sad fact. But there's one road in this country that is guaranteed to kill multiple people at a time, every raining season, that I know of. Others might know of others. Every raining season, that road would kill five people at a time, 11 people at a time, 14 people at a time. That is the road, Honorable His Excellency the President, that I believe you would recall about five years ago, six years ago, that took the life of my uncle, the late Uncle Ken. Last raining, raining season, an ambulance was taking a woman who had given birth to a premature child from Okangwati to Opuo. That road, because of rain, the mother who had given birth, the newborn baby who was given birth to, the mother of the woman who had given birth, and a number of other people, including a driver of the hospital, perished on that road. The reason being, the, the bridges are not proper. This road has been earmarked to be tarred 
But of course, two years ago, because of the financial constraints, the MTF has no money for it, or provision has not been made. I've engaged, maybe the Honorable Kale would not remember, but I've made my voice heard to him privately, personally. I've made this fact known to the Honorable Kanjore when he became a minister. Now that he's DG, I've made him aware of it. None of it, none of these really have an answer, maybe because of a lack of money. Honorable His Excellency, the road between a pupa and a poor, come the next raining season, will kill again. Can your office at that highest level intervene for money to be availed? Of course, an audit maybe should be done to like roads that do, do the same for provision to be made that we don't continue suffering the loss of life when it can be avoided. His Excellency, the next is, I brought a motion through the, or the PDM through myself, brought a motion to this parliament. And that motion was to deal with the red line. Spoken widely with all members of this parliament, myself, including members uh, of, of on that side. The Honorable Naruseb called me into his office. As, of course, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's an elder, a man that I respect, but as a colleague at this level. Called me to, 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 to the ministry, he consulted, they made a presentation with his team and said, please, we don't want to go on the floor of parliament and differ on this pertinent issue. In terms of that presentation, everything was in place for the red line to be dealt with for Namibia to be united because currently we have one, two Namibias, two economies. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I withdrew that motion, believing that government finally is taking the red line seriously. And in, a, in addition, this issue went to the land conference. Of course, that I did not attend because of the politics of the time. Ojiti, Because of the politics of the time. Be that as it may, His Excellency, the resolutions that came out of the land conference, even if I was not there, I'm an Namibian that is entitled to a view, to me are not serious enough. His Excellency, the red line needs 100 million according to that presentation that was made. Maybe in a bet to unite Namibia, as we are saying, maybe something should be done about that. His Excellency, my second last question is a question that I've discussed with the Honorable Shimi, albeit very briefly as a new person in office. And it's the money that has now been very mentored or been urgently uh, been given to the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education to ensure that we can stem the advancement of of, of, of COVID-19, quite a huge number of millions. Now, if there's one fact that maybe the, P, the right honorable PM and myself differ is in the fact that I happen to think corruption in Namibia is systematic. The system produces corruption. Of course, the right honorable PM says no individuals are corrupt and not the system. But the system produces laws that people use for that. So it's systematic. Now, the question is this. If this money that is going to be used is they, they are going apparently to be special procurement processes to fast track, they are very welcome because these are urgent measures. What are we going to do in terms of these measures to ensure that these monies are going to be used and used very efficiently and very frugal, uh, in a frugal manner, if, 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 if that's the right word to use? In, in Parliament, um, to ensure that people are not robbed again of this money through corrupt activities. Uh, um, His Excellency, my last question perhaps relates to your answer on the, on the, on the, on the SWAPA office, which says the $700 million to build emanates from SWAPA donations and SWAPA companies. The question is as such. Since independence, or since the establishment of each and every Swapo company, how much did each of those companies in profit or revenue make, yes, make 
make from public procurement. The reason for that question is this. Swapo is the owner of the companies, as it's being said. Swapo is the party that is holding government coffers for the, next, for the past 30 years. And as far as my recollection is, there is no political party that owns a company that deals directly with government. So the question is, how much did Swapo make in business with government for the past 30 years? Thank you. Honorable. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next. No, no, no. I have a list that I want to exhaust, please. Um, the Honorable at the back. Hmm. Uh, th thank you, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Fan Fan Veik. Yes. Oh, you had a haircut. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, actually, a new style. Yeah. Yes, uh, indeed. Mr. President, good afternoon. I actually had a few questions, but since time is running out, I will only concentrate on one. Thank you. And then also have a, a, a small comment. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I was given this poster to ask a question to the, to, the, to the President regarding the allocation of fishing quotas to the new applicants. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Mr. President, it, is, it has been indicated by applicants that the process has been com compromised already. It is alleged that a lot of corruption has taken place. There is a lot of favoritism. My question is, Mr. President, is it really worthwhile to continue with the process while we are having a lot of questions and allegations regarding the process that is headed by Honorable Kawana? I want, uh, Mr. President, just to enlighten the applicants on, on the issue with, with regard to the allocation of fishing rights. Thank you. Then, Mr. Oh. President, a comment. We have just f a few days or a few hours ago um, witnessed how the law enforcement, especially the NEMPOL, how they have manhandled a journalist in your presence, we understand. <laughs> Mr. President, my party condemns this kind of action by law enforcement in the strongest possible terms. We do understand that an apology was issued. We appreciate that. But the apology, Mr. President, is not enough. We want to see action against those who mistreated or mistreats our citizens. Thank I thank you. you Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Honourable Swart, Swart Boy, please. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, sir. I recognize the time, but I must commend to you that today you have chaired exceptionally well under very difficult circumstances. <laughs> yes. Uh, Th that compliment can only come from my former student. Aha. Aha. <laughs> yeah. Honourable Speaker, sir, I want to ask uh, Dr. Godfrey uh, Kaingop. First director of elections and uh, all of those things he likes to hear <laughs> about this matter of the procurement board in which one ethnic group was placed uh, in uh, a, a very definitively uh, powerful position in relation to the question of unity and so on and so forth. What is he going to do about it? Because his minister of finance is quiet about a procurement board that essentially represents one ethnic group in a post-independent, post-colonial Namibia. That is one. Two, uh, Dr. Kengo, my conversations with the fishermen just yesterday indicated that they formed an association, which association together with other fishermen from Ludrats, in other words, a combination of Wolfish Bay and Ludrats fishermen, formed an association, met requirements to apply for fishing quotas, indeed applied for fishing quotas, got the acknowledgement that their applications were received, were told that the applications were processed, were promised 
if their version is correct, by the Honorable Albert Kawana from Zambezi, that they would be considered for fishing rights. Now, one of the things that they have explicitly told me is that they want these fishing quotas to help maintain the 5,000 of them. While it is a business venture, it is also really a social intervention from the colleagues who say, look, we know this business. We know this industry. If we are given quotas, we are able to rebuild our lives, get our lives back into order. Some of the colleagues have really become old uh, and have gone back to the north and so on. My question, in fact, plea to you is to kindly look into this matter so that perhaps as a more solid solution to the fishermen, that that association, in fact, be given the, the fishing quotas, uh, the fishing rights, and that they then uh, get their lives going. I'm sure you will be able to do this because at times, even to our surprise, uh, Honorable Dr. Kengup, through you, Honorable Speaker, the President actually listens to LPM. Thirdly, <laughs> thirdly, uh, Commonwealth President, not a lecture, but just a request also. When you acknowledge 23-year-old person that was appointed by you, 24. 24 now, and you as head of state, although we dispute some of those issues, but nonetheless as head of state, you forget or deliberately omit to acknowledge other 23-year-olds. It hurts them. There are two ladies, Ina and uh, Utara, that are, that are also, that are also young Namibians. They were in the same class, these young people, and it hurts them because they are young people. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they feel hurt, and sometimes small conflict starts with these young people. So please, I would like you, Your Excellency, to acknowledge these young ones also. The last one is the budget that was presented clearly is a crisis budget. It recognizes the indebtedness of the state and that we have to do something about it. Comrade President, and comrade in the broader sense, not in the Swapo sense. Your minister, your uh -uh, huh? <laughs> in the, uh, our speaker, uh, the Secretary General Swapo party is disturbing. The plan needs to emerge. How is the debt going to be repaid? In what time frame? Secondly, the structural problems of the economy are not addressed. I was with the Honorable Schledwein today to say, look, get agriculture going. Because there you can gain low-paying, low low-skilled jobs, but you are gaining immediately. That's, a, that's, that's an area that must be looked at. And so therefore, unfortunately, the way the budgeting system works is that other political parties are unable to really come in. It comes here, it's sometimes too late. But the whole budget, actually, if, if I were you, I would say redo it cut some of the things a little bit more, and a very radical one, which I know would be difficult for you to consider, is given the budget line that has been given over the past six, seven years to employment creation and trade and industry, I would have said collapse those two ministries, take the little money, and invest it in agriculture. It will really be meaningful to start to get people back to lives by restocking cattle, goat and sheep numbers. Already, you start to stop this process of handing out food passes. Yes. Then, Cobra President, I also say to the Prime Minister, I now repeat it to you, please, revenue collection of government has for the past seven, eight years almost been at 100%, sometimes 97%, sometimes 98.6%, not bad. While your revenue collection capacity is okay like that, please don't go and create a revenue agency that has the potential to be a parastatal with additional opportunity cost mm -hmm. there too. Yes. For this budget, you have planned to, for transitional arrangements, an amount of 210 million. Mm -hmm. Our view is, take that amount, as you have been doing when the Negradal Dam problem was huge, monies would be taken from other ministries combined mm -hmm. and the dam was completed. I'm just proposing the same thing, take that money hold on to NAMRA and, and get it to a productive sector, really, yeah. uh, that would do something uh, meaningful <laughs> for the people. And consider, mm -hmm. I know you are an advocate of basic income grant, consider a refined and reformed basic income grant. Yeah. It, in our estimation, would cost for two years, even if we go by trial, 
Two years, if we pack it on the basis of what uh, Honorable Shimi gave, 750, it could be about 11.7, 11.8 billion over a two-year period. That would really be able to be something significant to generate demand in the total economy, save jobs in the retail sector, and enhance people's livelihoods. Yeah. Maybe it will not meet the, all, all the objectives, but it will begin to cut on food aid that you'll have to give. It will begin to cut on the criticisms of the uh, this not having gotten, that having gotten, and this having gotten millipop, the other person having gotten chicken. <laughs> it really, let's get to cash transfers because despite our philosophical dif differences in terms of the actual value that was given, one of the things that uh, Shimi has indicated, I'm not going to be praising you a lot, but today you, you deserve one, is that <laughs> at least with the collaboration of the private sector at no cost to government, if his version is correct, at no cost to government, cash transfers were able to be done in a very short time. It demonstrates capacity of the state to maintain a 24-month cash transfer program packed at 7, 750, and we, we then see, do an assessment perhaps after the first year uh, and see where, where does it take us. But it is something that is a low-hanging fruit, President, because the budget that was presented was based on four pillars, safe lives, safe livelihoods, safe uh, jobs, and put the country on a trajectory of prosperity. The prosperity part will not be there, but saving lives, saving incomes, and saving jobs, at least those three, would be met. Uh, Comrade President, at times you get irritated by me. When I rub you off badly, don't worry. An old man must sometimes be teased by young people. It's good. It gives us good exercises to tease an old man. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm being strategic here. Stay out of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm not giving an apology. I'm saying at moments when you get irritated by me, uh, remember that while I have fundamental disagreements with you, uh, I, I don't hate you. I actually pray for you, for good health, for wisdom, and so on. But I have fundamental disagreements with you. And I must say, the way you conducted at the latest stage, the state of the nation, was very good. You do well, Your Excellency. No lecture, you do well when you are calm and when you listen. But when you are angry, you chase. Uh, it, it, cuts, it cuts both ways. It cuts both ways. I concede that. It cuts both ways. On that note, Your Excellency. Thank you. Uh, you have also not answered the Damaranama Festival issue, please. Yeah. Uh, respond Th to that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. We, I, have, I now honestly want to conclude with the last colleague to pose a question. I hope we make it uh, yeah. uh, to the point. The Honorable Ipumbu. Yes. Yeah. Uh, His Excellency, uh, no, no, no. Mr. Uh, President, uh, uh, the protocol observed. I, I think, uh, Mr. President, you come here and uh, uh, preach uh, unity of purpose, but I don't see uh, unity within the cabinet that is sitting there. Uh, 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 just to say so is because currently uh, we know education is the key to success. And it's something that is not highlighted in this state national address. I have a problem with it because we have now learners that have assumed school. And in, 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 the med, in the newspapers of today, there are reports of schools that are not opening because of the dilapidating situation. I don't know how do you value other learners than other learners. You, you have set the date of the 30th of June. Why don't we wait? Why are we rushing things? Do we want to put the lives of the, 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 the generation to come at risk? Or what are we trying to imply here? Where is unity of purpose? Have you communicated with the, ministry, the Minister of, of Education to know that all the schools are, are ready to accommodate learners back to school? Is, is this something uh, not within your mandate? Or what is going on? Is that, I a, is it, that a question? It's also a question. It's a question, and, and it's, it's something that was, needs to be addressed by the comment. President. It's not, it's not a comment. It should be a question. Why are we allowing certain schools to open, whereas we have others that are not opening because of the dilapidating situation? Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the question. So, Mr. President, for you to continue preaching unity of purpose, I think you should engage uh, with everybody. 
Like okay. we, uh, the Honorable Venani there said, it's hard to engage with the president because whenever you are trying to get him, you will be told, okay. no, you can't. Okay. Mr. President, please, we, we, uh, try we, to talk with the Minister of Education. Thank you. We are putting our young generation at thank risk. Thank you. We deal yeah. with that. We deal with that. Thank you very much. I, honestly, those of who spoke before, can you, can you just make a, a short... Because you spoke before. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I'm uh, having on the. Are you, you are very close to your colleague there. Uh, no, he's far. He, he's far away. Yeah, he's far. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, I wanted to go to. We're having a problem with a, a people in jail for many, many years. I know that time. It's not uh, the, His Excellency Hage Kenkop, who was head of state. We're having a couple people in jail for many, many years. Please, I want the president to look on this couple people. They stay in jail for many years. Some are too old now. The man who was behind those people, he's not here in Namibia. Please, there was uh, a parole. Pardon, over. Pardon. Yes, yes. Yes. Mm. Please, I want uh, the president to put these people in a pardon, please. He has done. He has done that. But you are asking him to to go on yeah, looking into the matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. On Vovenani, the final one. Make it short, please. Very, very brief. Honorable Excellency, President. One matter that is very fundamental to my being a leader in this country is to revolutionize water, water, access to water. We can talk about our economic, socio-economic trajectory. There is no time in the world where we will have any growth if we do not make waters available to farmers. And perhaps in deeper negotiations, in closed doors, we need to talk about getting desalination plants. If you put one desalination plant in Cape Frio, passing Kunene, Musati, Hangwena, up to Kavango, you will change the northern Namibia into a green, in a green belt. If you put one in Luderitz and get it into Karas, Hardap, and Comas, probably to Omaheke, you will be able to change this country forever. So it is very important that I know resources, desalination plants do not come easy. They are not very cheap. They are very expensive, but as a government, we should really look at the future of our country in, in a very small microscope to see how would we leave Namibia a better place for future generations. Because if you go to countries like Israel, I know you might not like the Israelis, but there's one thing that they have done so fundamentally well. I was taken in, at, at a number of stations around Israel, even companies that are doing desalination plants. Of course, they wanted to, to lobby me for desalination plants, and even in Norway, there are a number of countries that are saying, we can put these things for you, mm -hmm. and you can pay us for 23, 23 years. But it's something that this country needs, that if we want farmers to have access to life, we need to give them water. The two last issues, the Whistleblowers Protection Act. You came here in 2017, spoke very robustly about it. When are we implementing it? Because it's very central to the fight of corruption. Lastly. It, it, it's, sometimes it's, it's a matter of PR that lacks in both, in many political parties, and even in yours. Let me tell you why I ask you the question of the Swapo headquarters. It was reported in four newspapers that the company Unique Construction has loaned 780 million to Swapo. That's, that's what, that was reported. And it looked very bad, because this company is tendering on roads, they are tendering everywhere, therefore I'm putting this question. And I'm, I'm, it's not a question of envy. In fact, my party is building a new headquarters, but a better one than yours and a cheaper one. I'm a cheaper man. But what I'm trying to say is that in a country where stories goes around, your party is it's not only a matter of envy, your party is in public office. And I must put these hard questions to you because you must lead by example. And that's, that's the reason why you're in public office. Otherwise, I'll take the office. Very good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before, thank you all of you for having expressed yourselves clearly and putting questions to, to the president. Definitely, this is the second round we have just concluded. 
and I'm now going to ask the president to respond. But before I give him the floor, there's something that I want to underline, and that is, it's a pity. It's a real pity that uh, the pandemic, the, 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 the common enemy that is confronting the whole world, have intervened to an extent that we were not able to have our new members of parliament going through an induction where we will get to know each other and get to actually appreciate each and everybody. But this is something that has been prevented by the pandemic. But once that is going to basically subside, we will uh, revive that and make sure that we have an opportunity to do that. I have taken note of the fact that, yes, we have a number of female members of parliament. This is something that makes all of us proud as a nation. Yes. And, and we really keep our head up when we are counted among those nations, parliaments that have got a substantial number of female members. So I just want basically to put that on record and appreciate. Um, Commander President, you have the final round. Yes, thank you very much. Firstly, two, two young ladies. I was talking about others because they were my deputy ministers. So really, whenever I see a young person, I'm proud. I watch they were, that. Yesterday she was talking. Whenever I see young people talking, I'm, I listen. I'm very, very proud of young people. If you had to go on delegation and talk there at the UN, I would be with you. So yes. young people, women, we are very proud that we got young blood. According to him, some of us are old, but we reason very well than young people. So really, my congratulations to you all. When I said those who were elected, I congratulated all of you, but I did mention specifically that person because he's making headlines all over the world because he's a minister. That's why I made that mistake maybe. So you are all congratulated. And welcome to come and engage me. Young people, I can talk to them, not these people. Because they make me younger because I talk to them. So. What, uh, let me start now with uh, the leader of the official opposition. Because he's, he's talking about a thing we ought not to disagree with. He's talking about really the dry country. And really, if we don't address the question of agriculture, it comes of water, we'll have problems. So let's put hands our heads together and really listen to what you are saying. Good deal can be made, but it's a future. Everybody is saying this country is going to get drier and drier. And if we don't start to act today, as I did with, I mentioned the committee I set up. These are experts. The men I mentioned, uh, yeah, Moritz, Moritz. It's the foremost expert we have in this country. And I made him a chairman and they did a study so we can again engage them and they can make proposals, we can talk to them and that way we can at least hold hands. We don't have to disagree on water. Water is life. So very, very, very good on that one. Uh, I'm coming from behind. Unity of purpose, Caprivi. Yes, I was listening to that. I, I, I'm also a little bit worried about it, but it's a judicial, judicial issue. And if I have to say, unless I do through my patenting, it is too long to tell the truth. But I cannot interfere because it's a court situation. But it's a thing really we have to look into. Uh, there are two people I think who are sick. One was a member of parliament and I really have something about that. So very good to mention it. In fact, I will be blank. It's okay, I'm not gonna say it here. Uh, Honorable, are you a doctor now? Dr. Swatwe. The statement you made today is the best I've had to make it. Um. <laughs> All his life. Not life, but this time. So thank you very much. Really, <laughs> <laughs> what you said, your statement, the last one, I couldn't agree. You will be surprised, but I agree with everything. But uh, you advised me not to get angry. 
But one thing I told you is you are a man who must stop being angry. I said, come it when you came to my office that time. I don't do like that, but it's a good beginning. The statement you made today. Huh? <laughs> okay, this will be personal. Thank you very much for your statement. The issues you mentioned, just like his, are things we don't have to fight because of party difference. This is our future. Definitely. Water. And therefore, let's meet and talk. Experts, you experts. The young people now who are younger. There, there are certain things like water. We cannot disagree. We know this country is dry. If somebody has good ideas, let's accept it. Not because it's coming from somewhere else. No, no, let's accept it. Our next one was uh, Workers' Party, Fishing Quotas. Was it Fishing Quotas? Workers' Party. Workers' Party. NEF, FF. Uh, thank you. Uh, you answered that one. Uh, answer. EFF. Yes. Next, sir. Yes. What is it about? Yes. About schools, huh? What is it? Yeah. Schools, yeah, okay. I agree with you. Firstly, uh, I think there is a daily briefing that was given, 10 o'clock, covering everything. The minister, not minister, but the ED of the Ministry of Education, I give her credit, Mrs. Tiankam, she has been there explaining, even yesterday, about his problems. And it's true. Some schools are not in good conditions. It's terrible, it's embarrassing, but I was in the bush, and where schools or some, I was training people. i give you an example when I went, I'm not gonna mention the area, but one person was sitting, principal, with a, no, here, <laughs> here he has a, a, look at, this thing fell down our kitchen, nothing. Now when it rains, we are cooking there. When it rains, water. Government, government. So I just said, okay, while we're waiting for government, some of us in the bush, why don't you put one pole here, one pole here, one there, there, and put the roof in the meantime. To it is not to be wet. If it is, then you're not going to be wet. It looks like we don't want to do anything ourselves as parents and also as just community members. Everything is government. There are things that we can fix in schools ourselves as community members. Young people can be occupied. But I, I'm not trying to run away from our responsibility. Government has a responsibility, but it's not easy. The conditions I'm seeing the school classrooms are in. And it's only we, we had the idea of the money from World Bank, Africa Development Bank, about billion or so set aside just to renovate the schools. As we're trying to do that, these things come, but that is a thing, it's ISO for all of us. I cannot be proud that I'm a president and you see the children. In some countries, they don't do that. In Namibia, that I'm proud of, to see the children, the conditions they're in. It hurts me, to tell the truth. I'm a parent too. So it's a thing that we must also hold hands and also parents to come in. And those who can donate, we can ask people certain things. What Namibians have shown during this crisis, mm. They really showed their hearts. <clears throat> they came out fitting and so on. Very impressed. Thank all Namibians for that. And now, for the, what is the next one? For the next one. Who was it? This is the nation. Now, I, I answered him. I agreed with him completely. Huh? Whistle blow, yes, whistle blowing. Again, it's a thing everybody's waiting for. Blow the whistle, proper one. One thing I must also say, we're talking about whistleblower and so on. It may wrong, it may start one day do you that wrong whistle is blown. So we must say proper whistle must be blown. 
Definitely, not just blowing the but This thing has been outstanding. It passed it all. Oh, it's, a, it's a, do operating. Yes. Okay, so it's done. It's coming. Maybe slow. What else now? Hmm? Who is it? My people. Maybe I remember. I answered you. And then there was. What is that? Ipumbu. I, 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 huh? What is he doing? Yeah? Oh, fishing. Oh, fishing. Yes, oh, fish, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, definitely, I, I think only resource we control is fishing. And it should therefore serve us all. Really. It, we control it. That's why we're doing what we're doing with it. So, really, if there are people, railroad area, and they came in a group, and they form a good company from all over, okay, the ministers are here, we'll discuss it. The minister is there, so we'll discuss it. Because the idea that people have to think that only one group or one, please, let's leave that. I want us to share. And that's the thing, now you have mentioned it. Uh, minister is here. And I think it's the only thing we control. And that's why I'm misusing it sometimes. So really, this is the difficult times for all of us. Some people got rich, not because of, they are stealing, but they got caught us all these years. I have the list of people, one day I will talk about it. So thank you. I'm, I'm noting and gave it to the, to the minister to bring it up so we can discuss it. Relook. Red line. What was before, huh? Yeah, red line is a disease. It's a disease that we all are talking about for 100 years now. But we are told if we just remove it, then our markets, you know, to Norway, up to EU, will be affected. But for how long? We can get a power zone. Yeah. So really, again, this is a thing we must look into. It has been outstanding for a long time. <coughs> and I was involved again, too. We tried to do it then. As we're trying to do that, the Angolan side. If Angolan side is not also what you call well, that was a problem. And we didn't lose our e EU quotas, so to say, rightly so. Now, we are thinking Angola must also be involved, maybe, unless we can have a quarantine area to start to you know, clear certain areas, have the cattle or whatever cleans there. It's, a, it's an interim measure. And that will maybe involve everybody, even people who are in the red are around for 30 years. Red line. Then you are saying you are going to accuse me we are separating the country. That you can say. Because for 30 years, that line has been there. It's true there are scientific problems. But we can maybe do, I think, to quarantine certain areas. The yellow, yellow area, somebody was telling us about yellow areas. And that way they can export here. So thank you for that. My colleagues are here listening. So since I accept, therefore they are listening what I said. What else? Hmm? Oh, the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are saying what? only one tribe is there. Which tribe? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Firstly, firstly let's also talk. We talk about attending Damara uh, festivals. What do you mean? Yes, Nama, yes. Firstly, uh, I was having my countrywide trips for equipment scheme when I was a Minister of Trade. And I have one example that I finished the whole country, and last stop I stopped was in uh, Omuthia. And there's a guy called Michael, his cousin, Michael Iambo. Famer. He missed me there. Now, the last post was in Opuo. He drove. Because he, I, his place, he was not there. He drove. Caught me in Opuo <coughs> and presented his plan. We helped him with the trucks and so on because he made that effort. The Tamara speaking people from the south of Opuo, and I was there for equipment schemes. 
I was shocked at it. Not a single. To come and ask for equipment. The, the fellow who is here, he's, he's working now as a minister who was in Porichat. None. We made him even as a champion because we're taking a person who is doing well. What is this fellow? It was an uh, agriculture. He was. He is now with the ministry, some ministry of agriculture. Clemens, Clemens, Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm mentioning the person who is not in the building. But chose him as a champion. Didn't come. Only to call and insult the girls. It's my money given. Let's also accuse. Let's also see. Sometimes we just sit and not be aggressive. However, if it is discrimination based on this group or this group, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. But definitely, sometimes we have to also jump up to be aggressive, like I do. You know what I do? I fight. Now for Damara and Nama. You know, when we came back, I talked to Garo, he said, and there was a big one. No, no, in a Ogombay. Ogombay. I said, they asked me to go and address. I said, invite the president. So they invited the president. The president came, helicopter, he addressed, he left. We stayed there. Very impressive. First one. Following year, we again went. When we came there, you know the Damara, uh, the, uh, the flag? Damara would be blue and red. Green and blue. Green and blue. Green and wait a minute. I'm coming. Who are you? <laughs> blue and green. We belong to groups. Now, to make peace, there were always this troop and fighting and so on. To make peace, white was put in between to make peace. That's why it's now green, white, and blue or something like that. Now, when we came the second time, that flag is now this thing. A UDF, isn't it? How do you do that? So, hmm? yeah, Oryx. Well, when we came there, it, that meeting turned out to be a UDF meeting. Now, whatever it is, I went. I even said we would like to have culture. I'm a cultural person too. Why not? But that meeting and that became UDF meetings. And I couldn't, I'm a member, I'm also a leader too, to go. So that was the decision. As for last one, as for last one, I was invited. And besides that, Justus, Chief, Kaup, Justus, you don't recognize. Yes. Now, if you invited me, I was about to go. Only to be told he's not invited. So Justus, Karev, why? Because he says he is his Highness, Royal King of Kings, and so on. And because of that. And I talked to him, I said, why don't you drop those things so we can move on? We are very good friends, in touch. I said, why don't you just drop those things? Because we are saying, cow, that's enough. He then made a good point to say, new people have come up, you know, in Tamara there was only one person. Now there's about seven. And he said, and he said he couldn't, he, what is the problem? Can I, uh, I thought the things. It's okay, it's okay. It's I don't okay. know what is, it, what is it going on. Let's, let's, let's what hear. What is the problem? Mm. What is the problem? What is the point? As, as, as kings, well, how? Do you hear what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, what is, what is your problem? Hey. Let's, let's, let's not get, f no. I went to, I went to the, I went to the north. And I said, we cannot use kings. Because it is a republic here. They, they cannot say, they are not saying they are, they are. They, they it's it's are. okay. We, no, we, we don't need to have a dialogue, please. Just a, 
First, first, firstly, wait a minute, man. You it's are, okay, you are, okay. you, you are saying invited. Who invited me? The king, the, the guy who is recognized here in Bendu. Who is the Damara chief? Who is the Damara chief? Okao, Okao. Are they united? Well, that's your point. It's okay, okay. So what? Uh, so what? Uh, let's not go far. Let's not go far. You did a no, good no, job. No. You are destroying it now. Thank you. you did very well. Let's move on to the next question. Yeah. I. Please, I, please. I, I. No, no, no. Let, let's not. Let's not dwell on this, please. It's, let's, let's leave it to answer the questions, please. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's, no. Please, okay, okay. Maybe we that's not, a problem. We are not having a debate. What you are doing is a problem. That's a problem. Okay. What you are doing is a problem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 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 no. That's a problem. Let, no. Let us end on a positive note. Please, please. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's no, 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 no. Thank, no, 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 no. Thank you, thank you. No, 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 thank, no, no, no. No, please, let's calm down. Uh, let me, let me. Why let's have that's order. A maybe what let's, we are doing is a problem. Order. That's no, a problem. No, 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 no. It's maybe that's okay. a problem. Okay. Okay. You see, uh, let's look how you are order, looking. Order, about. order. Le no, 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 no. It's okay. it's enough. It's enough. It's enough, it's enough, it's enough. Oh, le let's move on to the next item. Uh, uh, it's okay. That's let's, the problem. Let's, no, okay, okay. Th thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 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 that's getting. Thank you. We we need we that need order, problem. please. No, no, no. Please let's get order, please. Please hold, that please. That is a problem. Let's Who have invited? order. Firstly, let me tell you. Calm down. Let 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 me listen. say this. Let's have order. That's let's, a problem. Let's listen to each other. Wait a minute. Now what you are behaving, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Okay, okay, we are done. No, 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 please let's order, please. Let's, let's hold. Now, where we are at this point in time, we have really gone smoothly over a number of issues. What I'm suggesting, what you're talking about here is the sort of thing that you can engage the president outside parliament. It's not it's that problem. you should continue. No, let's, let's, no, no. I think it's enough is enough. I'm in no, touch no. with this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's First, hold now. Yeah, firstly, I am one of the full-blooded Damara. Both my parents are Damara. Some of you are mixed. I am the full, full blooded, yes. including all of you are talking about your parents, your parents are humble that you are talking about here. Yeah. That's the point. My, I am a full blooded Damara. Okay. And that okay. is the problem. What is happening here is the problem. Nobody has come to me. You just got me and daily contact. We are together. We are defending him here. We are together. But you are shouting now. And that's a problem. Hmm. That's a problem. Yes. We. Okay. Where did you finish? Okay, let's continue. 
Let's continue. Let's continue. That's the problem. Uh, do we do we still have more questions? I, th I think we are done. Hmm? I think we are done. Co 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 Comrade President, I think you have gone through all the questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But okay. that's the problem. Good. Your Excellency, allow me once more. Allow me once more on behalf of the members of parliament and the Namibian people to thank you for availing yourself for this important occasion. We, we, the surgeon at arms will now lead the procession from the chamber and the honorable chairperson, vice chairperson will escort his excellency the president as we take leave of the, the chamber. I ask honorable members to rise and to remain standing when His Excellency leaves the chamber. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Yes, yes, please. You can do it. Session. Parliament session officially declared.